We got a nice big tent like 2019. They told us we couldn't put, put no real big tents out here. We got to just use the space we had. So. They said that? Huh? Down there? Yeah, the one from down there. Mm -hmm. um, they said we couldn't put that one because we didn't have that space. Oh. See, last time we rented this whole thing out. Mm -hmm. you know, this we, this whole, whole area was out. Oh, wow. So they let us put that one there. They said this year, because I was going to have a party tent brought in, rent it from Issachar. They was like, nah, you can't. You got to make do with the space you got. So they was like, we really don't rely, right? Large party tents are not allowed on the rental spaces. So, this is our tent for Tabernacles 2021. 20, oh, wow. Con, oh. may the most high have mercy on us. <laughs> oh, lightning come down, Lord. <laughs> All right. Uh, can we get some of you men to tie this in the middle? It's us. I put it up, and the, the more it goes higher, the light doesn't shine down like that. So, uh, being right here might be better. I, put it up I was there. just gonna put it in the middle. Put it up there. See how it look. Um, oh, right here. here? Yeah. In the oh, okay. That's what I mean. Oh, I thought you meant like. Would I kind of give more light, light to the to everybody? Oh, I think that'll be good. It, yeah. And then, matter of fact, we can cut it off for now. And then, uh, just tie it up there. You think you can get it up there, Tosh? Come on. We yeah, we got light. string right there. Okay. And uh, when it when it get dark, we'll turn it on. Come on, y'all don't be teasing me with all the snacks. I don't want to start snacking because I've got to go on the script. I'll be sitting up there in Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> Shalom. 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 All right, so we're going to have uh, closing Shabbat, uh, Tabernacles 5th, going into 6th day. Quick lesson. All right, try not to be too long-winded. I know everybody want to enjoy themselves and enjoy the company of each other. Eat, drink, and be merry. But uh, we got to do the spiritual part. Y'all know that. That's what brings us here. First and foremost is the word of the Most High, Yahweh Shai. Good? Good. All right, so none of this, you know, would even matter if it wasn't for this great feast day. So we enjoyed everything. We enjoyed the camping, the eating, the drinking, the fellowshipping. But uh, let's not lose focus of why we're here, the spiritual part. Good? We, uh, this is all part of praising the Most High for bringing us out of Egypt, you know, bringing us out of, uh, bringing us through the wilderness for 40 years. Well, we dwelt in tents and booths throughout the wilderness. Um, we didn't have any permanent housing. So, you know, the booths and the tents was our housing as we went through, wandered through the wilderness. You know, with the pillar of the uh, cloud guiding us by day and the pillar of fire by night. Mm -hmm. So this commemorates that. And uh, like we brought out in the opening service, the Feast of Tabernacles, as with all feast days, they have layers to them. You know, we thank the Most High 
for the tabernacle of our bodies. We thank the Most High for our homes, which is our tabernacle. We thank the Most High for Yahweh Shai giving his tabernacle, uh, you know, dying for the nation of Israel. Right? We give the Most High thanks for the tabernacle, which is the kingdom, which is going to be our dwelling when we get up out of here. So there's different spiritual layers to uh, celebrating the feast days. Okay? We get into the eating and the drinking and the having the fun and, you know, all the things. But, uh, you know, as always, stay grounded with the spiritual part, which is the foundation of what we all, what we all doing this, what we all here for. You know, what does this all mean? Okay? Uh -huh. So never lose focus of that. Um, so we're going to go in. We got some daylight left, you know. We could have started a little bit earlier to get more of that Sabbath essence in it. But, um, you know, when you're doing a feast day, man, you got to pray to the Most High for a lot of mercy because, uh, you know, you got to do things on the Shabbat that you normally wouldn't do. You know, okay. you forget things. You, with all the preparation, we've been, what, Kathar, you're shopping the last four or five days and mm -hmm. still forgetting stuff like, wow, oh my goodness. Okay. So, uh we got to pray to the Most High for a lot of mercy, man, on the Shabbat, you know, because, um, you know, we're trying to do everything we need to do for the, the feast, okay? Uh -huh. You know, so uh, may the Most High have mercy. Give me St. John one seventeen real quick. You know, when it comes to the Lord, you got to find that balance. But just because there's mercy, we still try to keep the Lord to the best of our ability, okay? Uh -huh. Even though there's mercy, but, um, you know... With the balance of it is, you know, it's a feast day. You you just gonna need certain things. You know, you you can wait to sundown and be like, well, okay, let's go and get all this stuff now. And then it's 9, 10, 11, 12 o'clock in the morning before you get everything. So, you know, may the most I have mercy because, uh, you know, you, you're, gonna, you're just gonna need certain things for the feast. Okay? Uh -huh. And um, that's why preparation is very important. You know, do the best you can. But in my... In my Almost 30 years in Israel, it, it just seemed like you always forget something. Or you don't get enough of it. Or it's like it's just always something. But uh, just, uh, you know, in the future, we do better at preparing. Okay? Uh -huh. So at least we got about an hour, hour and a half of some, still some sundown. So, you know, may the most I have mercy and acknowledge that we are putting forth some type of worship on for his uh, Shabbat. Okay? Uh -huh. And also... The fifth day of tabernacles going into the sixth day. All right, so um, we'll wait till everybody else can come in when they come in. But give me that St. John 1 and 17. St. John 1 17. For the law was given by Moses. The law was given by Moses. All right, you got to uncover your head, young brother. Yeah. All right, the law was given by Moses. Go ahead. But Don't grace... worry, we ain't going to laugh at you. You good. <laughs> Look like leaders of the new school back in the days. Bust the rhyme. <laughs> All right, read it again, brother. For the law was given by Moses. The law said the law was given by Moses. Go ahead. But grace and truth. Grace and truth. Come on. Came by Jesus Christ. Came by Yahweh Shai, man. And without that grace, we all be put to death. Right. You know, with that strictness of the law, we all be put to death. You know, uh, there's there's scriptures in the book of Numbers. We always read about the script, the um, fringes. But read up a little bit above that. There was men put to death for gathering sticks on the Shabbat. Oh. Okay? Oh. So, especially now, give me 2 Ezra uh, 14 and 12. Especially now, you already running, right? You already running? Yeah. Yeah, because I ain't getting this part. Especially now, as we see the day approaching. Y'all see these prophecies happening left and right. You know, I'm just, I'm just seeing strange stuff in the sky. I'm feeling strange stuff on the earth and even if it's not an earthquake i'm just like what the hell was that just now just weird just weird stuff happening the energy is crazy right now yeah, yeah. because that's the most high showing us that he has a heavy presence in this earth you know what i'm saying you're like what the, what did i just see what did i just feel like you know and 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 the most High said that towards as we get closer to the end of this thing you're gonna start he's gonna start showing strange signs and wonders it's stuff we may not even like. We got to go to Genesis and Revelations just to find a scripture. Like, what was that? You know? But that goes along with the strange signs and wonders. Okay? Uh -huh. So we're definitely getting to that time. So you want to tighten up. You want to get your house more in order. All right. Read on. Second Ezra. Second Ezra 14 and 12. 14 and 12. And there remaineth that which is after the half of the tenth part. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. Right. It said, now set that. 
because Ezra was dealing with time from the time of Yahweh Shai himself and just different periods of time that would lead to the last days or what was always known at the, the end times. Good. And reprove thy people. And said, now set your house in order and reprove thy people. Like we was explaining on the day of atonement, Aaron and the priests, they couldn't, they couldn't burn an atonement for the people until they did it for themselves first. It tell you that even in Hebrews, mm. right? It tell you, Paul said, look, you know, the priests, they had to do it for themselves and then for the errors of the people. So what? You got to set your house in order, then go reprove the people. You know, you can't be a crack dealer, gang member, prostitute, hooker, or whatever, and telling somebody else to repent from those things because you're going to look like a hypocrite. Okay? I mean, yeah. it's just common sense. You know, what you doing it, what you telling me? Mm. Even though what I'm saying is still right, but it's not a good example because I'm doing the same thing. So that's why I said set your house in order, then go and reprove the people. I was looking at a brother uh, post on Facebook, and a brother was saying, you know, a lot of Israel coming to the truth, and they learn the scriptures. They learn a few scriptures. After a month, everybody want to run out and start a camp and a T-shirt and a YouTube channel. Yep, God. And you'd be like, nah, these brothers need a little bit more training and wisdom when it comes to getting out there to teach this word. It, I mean, it just is what it is. Set your house in order, then go reprove the people. Huh. Right? Because what? You got you to get yourself in order. And then about a, 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 a T-shirt and a, a, a YouTube channel. You know, the, the uniformity, it, it kind of became a thing in Israel over the years. You know, brothers, same garment, shirt, whatever. It's, it's cool. It looks good. It looks powerful. But uh, that's not what this truth is about, man. You know, a, 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 a 20 men with a T-shirt and a YouTube channel don't really ready, really make you ready to go out there and teach the people. Okay? Uh, All right, read on. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. Right, comfort those that are being in trouble. You know, a lot of our people in trouble, man. You know, them brothers, uh, they went down there and tried to help the uh, Haitians on the border, the uh, ISUPK camp. I'm going to touch on that a little bit later with current events. But, uh, you know, they went down there to try to help out some of the poor Haitians on the border. You know, to try to, you know, help their own people. And uh, brothers caught a lot of hell. They didn't want to let them help them. They had to go around to the Mexico side and, you know. But at least the brothers tried to do something, you know. If it was a sincere effort, it's all good. Read on. And now renounce corruption. What did the Lord say? And now renounce corruption. Now we at that time, you got to renounce corruption, man. Anything evil and contrary to the word of the Most High, you got to renounce it. All right, go ahead. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. The Lord, said, the Lord said, let go from you mortal thoughts. You know, go ahead. Cast away the burdens of men. Cast away the burdens of men. Go ahead. Put off now the weak nature. Put off that weak nature, right? Come on. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Right, set aside the thoughts, the little petty stuff that you think, that you think is serious and you got to worry about. That ain't going to be nothing compared to what the most is about to bring. Okay? Um, right, go ahead. And haste thee to fly from these times. Haste thee to flee from these times. Meaning, pray to the Most High that he make a quickening. He, he does a quickening and he destroy this place quick so we can get up out of here. The, the less suffering, the better. You know, the less suffering, the more rejoicing at the kingdom. Go ahead. For yet greater evil, for yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. Right, greater evil. We haven't even seen, man. You think little Nas X is something? They got something coming worse than that. Right? You got uh, 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 rappers getting pregnant by the devil now. You got worse stuff coming than that. All right? You got worse stuff coming than that. You know, that's why a lot of a lot of death is coming into the world with these celebrities, rappers, whatever, because the most are trying to show them. Even in Israel, he's trying to show us. You know, so um, we in, we in that time. To really lock in, man, lock in, get serious, apply yourself to this wisdom, and, and come on back and get stronger. Get more disciplined with yourself. You know, get more serious with the most. High. Stay more focused, man. Stay in your book. All right? Stay um, exalting one another, giving each other those encouraging words. Okay? Uh -huh. We need that. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of folly in Israel. A lot of folly. You know, but where's the encouragement? Where's the positive words? Where's the brother's... And sisters exalting one another. All right, giving each other that 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 strength. You know, speaking to each other in, in a spiritual matter. 
not always wanting to share drama. Share something spiritual. You know, yeah, you see what happened, brother? They checked, they rebuked that brother. That brother got exposed, this and that. Do more encouraging. Okay? Right, go ahead. For lo, how much the world shall be weaker through age. The world is getting weaker and weaker through age. Because what? As as Esau kingdom go on, the most I said he was going to start bringing it down. So that's what Ezra is talking about. The world is becoming weaker through age. It's breaking down. Right, go ahead. So much the more shall evils increase. So much the more evils going to increase. When people start seeing that there's no hope with society, they just going to do whatever. You know what I'm saying? What they call it? YOLO? You only live once? When they start really seeing this society really break down and it's like, well, there's nothing to care about anyway. You know, they just going to go buck wild. They going to do whatever they feel like doing. That's how evils are going to multiply on the earth. Because people going to feel like, well, there's, there's no laws, there's no morals. I'm going to just do whatever I want to do. Uh. That's why now hip-hop has turned into a rapper getting pregnant by the devil. That's what rap has turned into. All right? Back in the days, we had the revolution. You had the street cats, but they was telling a story. They was telling a cautionary tale. Or they were saying, this is how it was growing up. It was sad. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. But now, they're, glor they're just glorifying pure evil now. Just glorifying pure evil. They had them, uh, what was that, the VMA Awards? All the black men come out in, in dresses and skirts. Yep. Wow. Right? Uh, 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 dudes got banana pill dresses on. Right? What are you doing? Just letting the industry turn you into a buffoon and a clown, man. At least back in the days, you know, brothers had on the Thames, a little, little army jacket, the cap on you. They look like men. They look rough. They look like street dudes. Now, they putting everybody in the dress, man. That brother from the Lakers, you know, I don't know what the hell he called himself doing. Yeah. Uh, with the white dress on. Yeah. Westbrook. Yeah, Westbrook, whatever his name is. You know, they, ju they just totally destroying us as a people. So here's where you want to be and you want to stay in these last days. Home, having your spirit right with the Lord. Okay? Right. Teaching our babies, man. They, they going after our babies. All this cartoon and... and, and uh. The brother was bringing it out how you, you, you look up certain children's videos and a little Nas X video comes up right near it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm looking for a little child video for my child to watch, you know, watch a little TV, keep them entertained or whatever. And here come a little Nas X video come up and he's twerking in jail with men. Oh, yeah. And that's supposed to be near the damn Sesame Street video or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They do. They poisoning our children, man. They, they trying to destroy our children. So how do we counter that? We got to keep our babies in this truth, man. You know, children going to be children, but they're going to watch by example. They're going to look at, well, what does mommy and daddy do? We're going to be children. We're going to play. We're going to want to have fun. We're going to want to, but as long as you're there to bring that balance. No, 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 no. We don't do that in this household. No, no, no. We don't follow that in this household. We don't do that. This is what the Most High said. Why are we doing this, Abba? Because the Lord said such and such. Why are we doing this? Because the Lord said such and such. And they remember that, huh? Mm -hmm. The scriptures tell you, give me uh, Proverbs 22 and 6. Proverbs chapter 22 and 6. Yeah, this is an agenda against our babies, man. It's crazy out here. You know, but we got to filter that out. That's why the Lord said it's a remnant. A, it's a remains because everything else is going to be destroyed. But the remains is who the most are going to deal with. Okay? So it's like we got to we gotta be spiritually and physically to a degree away from society. You got to start separating yourself more and more from this world. You got to look different. You got to feel that people got to notice something different about you. Why? Because you are of the most high in your house shot and you're not with this wicked agenda that this world is trying to do. Okay? Right, read that, brother. Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. Then, and the way that a child should go is according to these scriptures. Okay? You tell your children, we wear our fringes so it can remind us of the laws of the Most High. Okay? Yeah. We wear our fringes so we can do righteousness by, we can look at our friends and say, you know what? I can't hate my brother. You know what I'm saying? Look at my friends. You know what? I can't be out there in the streets no more poisoning my people. You know, I got to I gotta forgive my brother. As hard as it is, I'm a man and that carnal side. And what? You disrespected me? Got to let it go, man. Unless you got to totally defend yourself or you had no other choice. You know what? I'm going to pray for that brother. I'm going to pray for that sister. May the most high deal with that, right? That's a whole another level that you got to be on. You can't be that old man or woman no more. 
Okay? Uh -huh. Right, go ahead. And when he is old. And he, when they are old, go ahead. He will not depart from he it. He will not depart from it. That's your hope. You know, because so, unfortunately, sometimes your children might get old and they might stray away from the most high. There's nothing you can do about that sometimes. They grown. They want to be into this world of pressure or whatever. But you do your job as long as they're in your household. Okay? Uh -huh. And you still tell them, even if they go out there and get grown and want to go off, look, most high is watching you. You know what I taught you in this household. You know what you was taught. You know the truth. You was born into the truth or you grew up in the truth. You go out there if you want to and start being wicked. Most high got something for you. Okay? God. But the Lord said when they're old, they will not depart from it. So you want to you want to put that spirit of truth in the babies from young. So they said, no, I don't eat pork. I don't eat shrimp. No, no, no. My, my parents don't allow that. We, we believe in the Torah and we don't eat that. Okay? God. You know what I'm saying? And if it's a problem, you go to school, whatever authority, and that's how I raise my child. Ain't none of your business. <laughs> I got to submit letters and threaten lawsuits and turn it up on y'all. That's so be it. Okay? Uh -huh. Right? Don't <laughs> say so you got to do what you got to do. Leave my baby alone. They don't do that. Right? And likewise with the grown-ups. You got to be that example. Okay? Uh -huh. If you're going to tell your baby not to do it, then you can't do it. You got to be that living example. Okay? All right, so um, we're going to um, rise and open up with a prayer. Hold on one second. Uh, me and Kazak will command y'all once we get these horns going. Hallelujah. Uh, this, this way. All uh, right. We're just going to keep the prayer short for the sake of time. A couple of prayers as we open up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Our Father, Yahweh, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. By Hashem and Mashiach, and we shall have to water our mind. Hallelujah. 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 Blessing of Israel throughout the four corners of the earth, Yahweh. Yahweh. Hashem. Hashem. Hamashiach. Hamashiach. Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah. Rachnawah. Rachnawah. Hashalah. Hashalah. Habi Yasapai. Habi Yasapai. Shema. Shema. Yashalah. Yashalah. Yahweh. 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 Shema. Shema. Yashalah. Yahweh, Yahweh, Allah, Allah, Yahweh, 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 Y
Here, O Israel, Yahweh, power, Yahweh is one, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Blessing of the Shabbat and the fifth and sixth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for the Shabbat day and the fifth, going into the sixth day of the Feast of Tabernacles, Most High. Continue to bless Israel forever and ever. Thank you for all these days you've given us on this earth, Most High. The water, the Yad, I will love. Amen. 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 Repeat the Hebrew only. Bless are you, Yahweh, that gifts us the fruit of the vine. Barakat the Yahweh. Barakat the Yahweh. Ha Hawa Ah. Ha Paya. Ha Gapin. Ha Shem. Ha Mashiach. Yahweh Shah. The water. The water. The Miyad. I will long. Amen. Amen. La Yahweh. La Yahushai, La Yashala, La Shabaf, Wa, Kag, Sakawaf, Bashim, Bashim, Hamashiach, Mashiach, Yahushai, Yahushai, the water, the water, the Miyad, I will um, I will um, Amen, Dum Yahushai, Dum Yahushai, Bloody Yahushai, Bloody Yahushai, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Repeat the Hebrew only. Bless are you, Yahweh, that gives us the law. Barakat the Yahweh. Barakat the Yahweh. Yahweh Ah. The Thunder Nawa. The Thunder Nawa. The Bless are you, Yahweh, that gives us the light to see. Barakat the Yahweh. Barakat the Yahweh. Yahweh Ah. The Thunder Nawa. The Thunder Nawa. Ha Awar. La Ra Ah. Bless are you, Yahweh, that gives us the ram's horn to call the people. Barakat the Yahweh. Barakat the Yahweh. Ha Hawa Ah. The Thunder Nawa. Ha Quran. Wa Shawa Pa. Ha Quara. Ha Ain. Ba Hashem. Ha Mashiach. Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah. The water. The water. The Yad. I will long. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat be seated. <laughs> we get there, we get there. Uh, uh, say something for a minute because I'm going to open up uh, my life. All right, all right. Please come. All right, we can start off with our Proverbs. Uh, where we at? 21. Let's start off with Proverbs 21. It says, uh, first off at the top, Starting from the top, it says, Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh an intermediate, intermediate lit with all wisdom. Or he separates himself according to his desire. So we are separating ourselves from the world right now, coming into keeping these feast days. And the wisdom of this knowledge is what's keeping us from... <coughs> From, from the fools or being fools of, of, of the world. All right, so now we have knowledge of the feast days and it's on us to make sure that we keep them to the best of our abilities. All right, All right so this is what uh, we, we're here for. And we're here to learn and, and become uh, become better, you know? So making sure that we prepare in the right way, 
you know, for, for future, you know, feast days, you know what I mean? So we could, uh, this is just an example of what to do, you know, so we could uh, uh, practice the righteous acts, you know? So this is this is the wisdom that we are obtaining right now, and we're getting it through the Most High God in the Bible. So right here in verse 2, it says, A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. So a lot of people, like in the world, we just bring in about, uh, like in the hip-hop industry, you got people like Lil Nas X. Well, his light, he doesn't have any light or you know he doesn't really want to have any understanding he's feeding into the into the into the madness that he's bringing about you know around the world and it says uh but that his heart may discover itself right so he's he felt like like one thing that you hear uh homosexuals say is that like they found they self they discovered they self right that is a foolish thing to say Right, because how can you even, you know, discover yourself or be, or 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 be the man that you want to be without keeping these commandments, right? Uh -huh. So then, uh, if we could jump to uh, verse. Uh, what we got right here? Verse twenty-four, right? So a man that have friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that stick closer to a brother. So, in this truth, we have to have uh, friends that show themselves friendly. And, like, if you're dealing with the world, you're going to have people that are, act like they're your friends, but they're not close to you, right? So, we got to be aware and not fools, right? That's why you have people in the industry like Russell Westbrook and Little Nas X doing stuff that they don't even know about because of the friends that they have. You know, so right here, this is our friends, this is your family, you're around like-minded people, celebrating feast days, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Right now, we're in the wilderness. This is an example of what we have to go through. So now you get to gather around like-minded people and be friends with people and grow with people. All right, so so, this, so the Bible is about growing in, in the most high God's eyes and doing what's right in his eyes. Huh. Like in the wilderness, Caleb and Joshua were, were the only two people saved because they did what was right in the most high's eyes. You know, but when you have friends like little Nas X or you got friends like Russell Westbrook, you know, they're going to make it seem like you're doing what's right. They're going to make it seem like you're doing good. You know, you got all the money. You know, you famous. You know, everybody knows who you are. Everybody likes you. They're going to make it seem like you're doing good, but you're heading yourself to destruction and you're just doing foolish acts. Mm -hmm. That's it. You're just falling into the ways of the world and it's just going to make you become a fool. All right, so these feast days are to open up our minds and to gain more knowledge of what's, the, of what's true in the Bible and to have better understanding of what our ancestors went through. So we can learn from our, we can learn from the Bible, we can learn from our ancestors, and we can learn from people in the world. You got to watch all of these things that's going on. You can learn from your friends and how they act, what they've been through, what they went through, right? And then when you get the knowledge of this understanding, you share it with your friends because you have to show that you're a friend. You have to stick closer to your friend than a brother, you know? So when your brothers are not in this truth, you know, you still want to stick to them because they're, they're babies, right? They don't even know anything. Right, so we are here to teach you guys the true knowledge and understanding of the Bible, the true knowledge and understanding of the feast days that we're supposed to keep. All right, Khan? Khan. You ready? Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. All right, so there's a lot, you know, there's a lot going on in the world, Israel, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot going on with our people, you know, things are happening. Like I was bringing out earlier, you know, they got, um, give me a uh, Malachi 2 and 1. They got Levi at this Texas border, you know, straight treating them like slaves and trash and garbage and, you know, whipping them on horseback. I mean, it's just like slavery. You know, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Yeah, I remember a few years ago when they, they arrested that brother in Texas and they marched him through the city mm -hmm. on horseback. Back, yeah, kind and they of. had him cuffed, like, looked like they had a rope around his neck. Remember that? Yeah. There's nothing new under the sun, man. Right. 
And that's what happened during slavery. That's what the paddy rollers used to do, mm -hmm. right? Or the uh, patrollers. That's where the word patrol comes from. It comes from the word paddy rollers. Because during slavery, what would happen is they would have the Edomite trash, the so-called poor white trash, Edomites, they would have them go to hunt down the slaves. That's why uh, the police now, the reason why the police are so violent against us as, as a people also, because of their racism, but also because they are like the lower level of Edomites. They're like white trash, making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year to patrol the streets, put their life on the line, people shooting at them. Even as of recently, a lot of cops been shot and shot at. You know, because we in that time too. We in the time where people not, they're going to disregard law enforcement. To tell you that in 2nd Edges 15, the courts of every man action shall stand in his own power. All right, we we coming into that time also. A lot of prophecy, prophecy all around us. Huh. Everything you see is prophecy. But what I was looking at how the brothers from the ISUPK camp, you know, not no no disrespect to brothers, not to come against the brothers. I'm just making an example. How they went down there to try to help the so-called Haitians, and they were turned away. But you got to remember one thing: some of these curses, the most I said, our people are gonna suffer. Even when the help tries to come to you, it's going to get blocked because the most I want you to suffer. You know what I'm saying? You breaking your neck to get to America like it's so great. Here, we know Haiti is bad. Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. But you breaking your neck to get to America like they won't do an Abner. Y'all remember Abner Louima? The brother in New York, they shoved the plunger up his behind. Y'all remember that? He was a so-called Haitian. He was a Levite. There was another brother by the name of Patrick Dorsman in New York. He got shot. He was at a bar just getting a drink. And the cops asked him, the undercover cops said, you got any drugs? He said, no, man, I don't sell drugs. I work around the corner. I just came after the work to get a drink. And a cop kept insisting that he sell drugs. He said, I don't sell drugs, sir. I work in this area. I just stopped after work to get a drink. So the cop kept bothering. It eventually got into a fight. And what happened? The off-duty cop shot him and killed him because he was getting the best of him. Of course. But you trying to make you trying to force me to admit I'm a drug dealer when I'm not. Of course I'm gonna get upset and say, yo, get out of my face, man. You know, so he was a so-called Haitian. I knew Patrick Dorsman myself. He used to listen to us at the camp in New York City. So my point being, you acting like you're gonna come over here, break your neck to get to, to Haiti from here, and ain't gonna be peaches and cream for you in America. They hate you so-called Haitians also. All right, give me uh, Malachi 2 and 1. Malachi 2 and 1. Bring it out. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. Right, because Levi was the priest and they were the workers in the temple. That's where that name come from, lawyer in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, which means joined to me or joined to the Most High. They were joined to the Most High as the lawgivers and the workers in the sacred temple. Right, go ahead. If you will not hear... And if you, if ye will not lay it to heart. Right, because Levi went off. You had such a sacred place with the Most High one time. Now I'm going to bring you down to a lower state. Right, go ahead. To give glory unto my name. Go ahead. Save the Lord of hosts. I will even send a curse upon you. I will what? I will send a, I will even send a curse upon you. See that? The Lord said, I will send a curse upon you. So I'm just saying, while it's, it's good for brothers to try to help, there's nothing wrong with that. I know plenty of Israelite groups, they feed the homeless, they do missionary work, this and that, they, that's all good. But a lot of times, even when you're trying to bring the help, the most I will block it because what? A lot of our people, he punishing and they going to suffer. Okay? Um, right, go ahead. I have cursed them already. Uh, and, and will curse your blessings. Yeah, I have cursed them already. The Lord said, I will curse your blessings. Yeah, I will curse them. I have cursed them already. Remember, Levi was the priest. They were supposed to be do the ceremonial part to the Most High. Now what? They associated with voodoo, black magic, witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Oh, you from Haiti? You do voodoo, voodoo Haitian. Mm -hmm. I remember that in the 80s growing up in Brooklyn when a lot of the Haitians was migrating here. Mm -hmm. Because what? Part of these curses, a lot of you not going to escape the curses. Like I try to tell brothers about migrating to different places in the world. That's good. I'm not knocking you. If you want to get land, you want to so-called move off the grid, you want to move to another country, whatever, it's going to be better here for us. I, but you're not going to escape the overall curse. Everything is a trade-off. And don't knock me because I don't want to move with you. 
You understand? You're not going to escape the curse. The curse is here. You got something to say, Rob? Yeah. Um, <coughs> so like I remember um, that devil from the 700 Club said the reason why the Haitians uh, beat the French was because they was on. They had voodoo powers or something like that. Right, uh, yeah. Pat Robinson. Yeah, Pat Robinson. Yeah. yeah, Pat Robinson. That devil, Seven <laughs> Seven Hundred Club. Yeah. He ain't nothing but Illuminati too. He's yeah. he's connected to the uh, Rockefellers. Yeah, I believe he's actually a Rockefeller. If he's not, he's related to them or something like that. But uh, Pat Robinson, he's the devil. He's part of the Illuminati. That Seven Hundred Club is a front. Yeah. He's the one that said, um, um, instead of wasting three billion dollars on on a war on um um what's his name in um in uh in Venezuela. I forgot his name. Um it'll come to my mind, but he said instead of uh Chavez, he said instead of wasting three billion dollars on a war with Venezuela like we did with Saddam, let's just kill him. The man said it straight he said let's just have the CIA go into Venezuela and kill Chavez. Mm. He said instead of where yeah it's a, uh, some Christian you are. What happened to Jesus is Lord. Jesus forgives. Right? You're supposed to pray for Chavez and say forgive him. But no, remember, Ch Chavez was, was bringing hell to them. Chavez, he came to the um, um, United Nations and called Bush the devil. Right? Right in front of the world's face. He, he was up in Harlem. He said, I want to help out the blacks and Latinos. He was, he was working with uh, Joe Kennedy Jr. to bring oil and gas and stuff to the poor neighborhoods in Harlem so that he was like the blacks and Latinos that don't have heat over the winter. They can have heat. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he was, he was, he was bringing a lot to them. And Pat Robinson said, man, let's not waste $3 billion. Like we did with Saddam on a costly war. Let's just go in there and kill him. Send in the military and the CIA and just kill Chavez. So much for your Christian pastor. All right. But is he been long exposed for to be an Illuminati pundit and, he uses that 700 club as a Christian front. But that right. devil, he's down with the program too. All right, so read on, brother. Because you do not lay it to heart. Behold, I will corrupt your seed. The Lord said, I will corrupt your seed. What is your seed? Your offspring. Mm -hmm. So he said, I will corrupt Levi's seed. So the, uh, the, the Haitians have had a long time of being corruptible in the sight of the Most High. That's why they suffering. Like all the tribes. All the tribes, we got our little individual sufferings, and then we got our sufferings collectively as a nation. Right? Go ahead. And spread dung upon your faces. And what? And spread dung upon your faces. He said, the Lord said, I will spread dung upon your faces, meaning what? He will, <coughs> he will make the Haitians look bad. He will tarnish their image. That's what that's talking about. And actually, literally, when they doing their voodoo ceremonies and stuff, they be having mud and dirt and... All kinds of dung on their face, literally. All right, what, what was that book, uh, Haiti, Feast and Famine? They show you that in that book, Haiti, Feast and Famine. They show you how they spread all kinds of mud and dung and different stuff on their face when they're doing their rituals. But spiritually, that's talking about, you know, like somebody say, yo, you making my name fit in the street. You know what I'm saying? Right. Meaning the Lord will tarnish the Levite's image. Right, go ahead. Even the dung of your solemn feast. Even the dung of your solemn feast. I will turn your rituals into evil. All right, go ahead. And one shall take... Remember, they should call Levi, you, you Haitian booty scratcher. <laughs> <laughs> like they did with him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right? right? Remember a lot of times they would, they would equate they would equate Levi with him. Yeah. They would kind of put them in the same category. So the most I said I was going to do, I was going to tarnish your image. Since you were supposed to have the prestige image... As being a priest and a Levite, I'm going to tarnish your image. So what's happening down in Mexico is part of the curses. Like I said, it's good the brothers went out there and they, you know, they tried to give food and water. And uh, eventually when they got to the Mexico side, uh, the, uh, I think it's Del Rio it's called. They, when they got to that side, then they were able to give the food and the water and the stuff to the, uh, to the, uh, you know, the uh, so-called Haitians. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's part of the curses still. Because how much... How much food and water and supplies you going to bring them? They stuck on that border. They getting smacked around, knocked upside their head by the, by the patrolmen on the horses, them Texas mm -hmm. Rangers or whatever mm -hmm. down there. See that? So that's the most high doing that to Levi also, breaking your neck to try to get over here. They got all kinds of rumors. They said they hijacked a plane. But they said, well, how do they hijack a plane when there's thousands of them? How many people can you get on one plane? You know what I'm saying? How did they get over here? You know what I'm saying? So that's showing you 
All the tries. Give me a uh, real quick. Hold that. Give me Jeremiah 30 and 16. No, I want the one. Um, What's the one? Uh, the children of Judah and the children of Israel were pressed together. All right, get that one for me. It's showing you because what? Last year, the year before, a couple of years ago, what was we looking at? We was looking at how Issachar was being treated at the border. Mm -hmm. Remember, they had them in cages, cages. locked in. It was like a like a, a a little a little space like this with like two hundred of them, a hundred of them in there, all packed up on each other. Like foil blankets, right? Yeah, foil blankets. What that remind you of? The slave ships. Huh. Remember the slave ships? Y'all know we got the famous picture where we showed a we showed a picture of how the slaves was laid on top of each other in layers. Mm -hmm. That's how that's how Issachar was in the deter mm -hmm. uh, the um what they call the detainment camps. That's how they was. They was all on top of each other, man. All top, all stacked up, foil blankets. You know what I'm saying? Trump said, hey, that'll, that'll be okay. Uh, it's going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? Children crying because they got separated from their mother. Remember Deuteronomy 28? Mm -hmm. It said you will long for your children. You will be separated from your children. It looks like slavery to me. Modern day slavery. Remember during slavery, you were sold off to one auction block. Your daughter was sold off somewhere else. Your son, your husband was sent somewhere else. Right, bring that big buck here. I want that big. I need that big buck for my plantation. They look at your wife. I need her for my bed, which I want her on my plantation. So the same thing. It's a car was all scattered. And my mom, remember, they showed the uh, that famous image of the little it's a car boy crying, mm -hmm. saying mommy in Spanish. Yeah, man. So it's the same <laughs> thing. You found it? <laughs> Jeremiah 33. Yeah, 50, 50 and what? 33. 50, 33, kind. Yeah, I always confuse that one. Jeremiah 50 and 33. So this is why we saying this so-called black and brown. and No, we need the nation of Israel to come together as a nation. Bring the tribes back together. Okay? Huh? All right, give me Jeremiah 50 and 33. Read that. Jeremiah 50 and 33. Bring it out. Huh? Uh, thus said the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel. And it the said the children of Israel, go ahead. And the children of Judah. And the children of Judah, go ahead. Were oppressed together. We are oppressed together, man. Right? The uh, Issachar, packed up in, in um, the uh, detainment camps. All right? The detainment centers or whatever. All right? We've seen, we, you know, like I said, everybody, every camp got that famous image of the slaves coming packed up like sardines on the ships. Now Levi down there, they all packed up running. And the brothers was the brothers left them the water and the and the supplies. They still had to go through this river. They had to cross this river and get all wet and soaked to get to the side where the brothers had the food and the blankets and the supplies at. Because they wouldn't let them on the American side. So the brothers had to go around to the Mexico side. And, and, and station themselves there with the food and the water or whatever. So they had to go through this river and probably getting wet and so all kinds of pollution is in that river. You know what I'm saying? So you like, damn, was, was we damn near better off in Haiti or are we, are we better trying to sneak and creep into the United States? All right, so the curses are still there on our people. All right, go ahead. And all that took them captives. The Lord said all that took us captives. Is modern day slavery is still Esau on horseback smacking Haitians up at the border. Right, go ahead. Held them fast. How they say out here in LA gaffled them up. Yeah. <laughs> they gaffling, they gaffling Levi up. <laughs> right? It's, it's funny, but it's not funny. It's yeah. jacked up. You know what I'm saying? They gaffling Levi up at the border. Right, go ahead. They refused to let them go. They what? They refused to let them go. The Lord said, all that took them captains held them fast. They refuse to let them go. Okay? okay? They like, look, we will not let you come into America. We will not let you come and get settled here. You're going to suffer on the border. But that, but what did they do with the Afghans? The Afghans, they brought them to the military base at Quantico. Uh, Quantico, Virginia. Quantico, Virginia is where uh, the FBI headquarters is at. But it's also a military base there. They got the Afghans on there. They're going to get them $2,500 a month. Mm. And they getting more depending on how many children they got. And they're going to set the Afghans up lovely. See that? Give me Ezekiel 35 and 5. But you think, you think 
that this so-called white man in America loves you. Uh, All right, you even get that much on your stimulus. <laughs> what you got, 1,403 times? <laughs> and you better be happy with that. What you get, 500, 600 a month if you got a couple of kids <laughs> up until December. Whoopie do. <laughs> All right, what you got, your unemployment cut off? Now a lot of people got to run back to work. That unemployment is finished. Okay? Okay. Right, so these are the things that's going on, man. It's nothing sweet in America. Okay. Right, give me Ezekiel 35 and 5. Read that, brother. Ezekiel 35 and 5, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. And our people, man, you got to realize the nations, mainly Esau, and all the nations, they have a perpetual hatred. God. And have shed the blood of the children of Israel. You have shed the blood of the children of Israel. On horseback, oppressing the so-called Haitians at the border on horseback. Just like the good old slavery days. Mm -hmm. Right, go ahead. By force. Uh, by the force of the sword. By the force of the sword. And we know Esau, he has every form of weapon. From the handgun to the nuclear missile. All right, he has every form of weapon. Right, go ahead. In the time of their calamity. In the time of their calamity, you, you kick and Levi when they down. Right? And remember, uh, uh, Levi, they just had an earthquake over there. Uh, on top of the earthquake they had back in, what was that, 2010 or 2011, that devastated them. They they still didn't recover from that earthquake. And they had a, right, 300,000, they said they, they had a million people, I think as of 2015, 2016, something like that. They said they had still had over a million people living in tent cities. All right? Imagine, you know, living living like this for, for years and years. I mean, we had to do it for 40 years, but the most I was with us, okay? Ah. But they living in tent cities with less resources. We can go to the store and get whatever we need, damn there. You go to Walmart, they got everything there. But Levi, they can't go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? They living in them tent cities jacked the hell up, man. All right, and now they just had another earthquake. They have all kinds of other natural disasters there. And what happened? They said, man, we trying to get out of Haiti and possibly get to America. You know, get a, 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 a residency or something. Maybe eventually a green card one day and we'll be all right. But now Esau's like, nope, let me show you what you, we think of y'all sneaking into America. Just like we did the Mexicans. We only let them come here to use them for cheap labor and for their drug cartels. The smuggle drugs here. Right? So, you know, it's just a hatred on our people. We got to realize these are the ah. things that's going on in the world. And it's all what the most I said would happen in the scriptures. Ah. Right? Go ahead. Therefore, as I live. Cut the light on, Rob. There's a switch on there. Go ahead. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord God. Go ahead. I will prepare thee unto blood. What did the Lord say? I will prepare thee unto blood. He said, I will prepare thee unto blood. Go ahead. And blood shall pursue thee. And blood shall pursue thee. Go ahead. Since thou hast not hated blood. Because Esau, he didn't, he didn't hate to shed blood. Go ahead. Even blood shall pursue thee. Therefore, blood is going to pursue him. Okay? He's going to get punished and judged for what he's done in these last days. Give me Isaiah 13 and 11 to link with that. Because he haven't, he haven't, you know, he haven't stopped shedding our people's blood. Blood is going to pursue him. All right. His kingdom going to get jacked up. He's going to get judged. He's going to get punished. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, look at we still able to do. We still able to come out and keep nice feast of tabernacles. Ah. Okay? Ah. Nobody bothering us by the spirit of the most high. The angels are encamping around us. Ah. We're camping and the angels are encamping around us. Okay? Ah. So even in the midst of the destruction and the prophecy happening in the world, the one third of Israel, the most high, is still going to maintain us and protect us. All right? And we we may be doing this till Yahweh shot come back. Well, I heard them niggas so, sitting somewhere calm, just fine. All this destruction going on all over in the world mm -hmm. is the most high. Okay? Yeah. Right? How many of us was good during the pandemic? You was good. You was in a house. You ate. You drank. You had shelter. You had food. <laughs> Some of you that were essential workers, you still had your job. Mm -hmm. You know, you was good. Okay? Yeah. You had your little extra money Esau wanted to throw you, even though he giving the Afghans more. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, the Most High, he's in the midst of all the prophecy and destruction. He's going to be protecting Israel that's doing the right thing. You know, them brothers went down into Mexico. They said uh, they said the city that, that the brothers from the ISUPK, they, had to, they eventually had to go to,
they said a lot of they was they was telling them the border patrol was telling them you we don't really think y'all should go there the cartels run those cities and y'all know about the drug cartels in mexico they'll leave you headless out there with no problem it's a car chop your head off and be eating a damn uh taco while he doing it you know what i'm saying blood is blood is nothing to him that's like somebody get that for me right blood is nothing to him so they told the brothers thank you sis they told the brothers like don't we don't think y'all should go to that area where the people are and out of every out of everywhere i think they call this something like a level four a level four cartel area something like that however they they label the areas in mexico right they call it like a level four cartel area meaning i guess the higher the level go the more dangerous so level four is kind of dangerous so they told all uh, the brothers we don't know if y'all want to go there because that's a level four four cartel city that's you know the cartel is heavily has a heavily controlling influence there and the brother said not nah, a hell with it we going to you know we going to help our fellow uh levi brothers and sisters you know what i'm saying but the thing is how does these how do these people that's trying to you okay you caught them at the border sneaking up you can't at least detain them somewhere at a decent place until you figure out what you're going to do with them how do they end up just wandering in cartel land <laughs> you know what i'm saying because what they lining them up look go out there let the cartel kill them sacrifice them kidnap them as sex slaves kidnap the women as sex slaves kidnap the men and make them working slaves whatever how you got them in a level four, whatever whatever they call it, a, a highly dangerous cartel area city in Mexico? Well, how, how the Haitian refugees, I mean, or uh, whatever, the, the uh, Haitian migrants, how they end up there? All right, Esau is the devil, and Issachar's government is probably down with it also. And they said, the hell with them, leave them out there so the cartel can kill them. All right, and you you wondering why we under this captivity and we under the things that we under, because what? This society hates us, man. That's why we got to turn back to the most high. Your Howard shot. That's our only hope. Uh, huh? Uh, All right, read on. You want uh, Isaiah 13 and 11? Yeah, Isaiah 13 and 11. Read that. God, and I will punish the world for their evil. And, what the Lord say? And I will punish the world, world for their evil. The Lord said he's going to punish the world for their evil. Uh, right here, the most high showed Cali. I can scare y'all too. Yeah. That big earthquake out in Carson <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Well, that's that's not big by some standards, but that 4.3, damn sure made me a believer. Yeah, that's a day of the meeting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is my second, uh, no, this is my fourth time feeling earthquakes in uh, in Haiti. I mean, uh, in, in uh, L.A., I'm thinking about Haiti. Um, earthquakes in uh, L.A. I, you know, I used to tell my wife, oh, babe, I've been here like 10 years. I ain't felt no earthquake. We're talking about these earthquakes. You ain't feel that? I ain't feel nothing. Most I made me a believer, boy. You know what I'm saying? Shook, boy. Most I said that any day, boy, I'm going to make that San Andreas fault, boy. You're going to get the big one. The 10.0. Like uh, that movie The Rock was in, San Andreas. And then they got a, they got an actual movie called 10.0. Uh, you know, they was making movies about uh, the, the big one in California. But hopefully, if any of our fellow brothers and sisters are here, you know, you be safe if and when the Most High makes that happen. Because he can make it happen. Okay? Ah. All right, read it again. Isaiah 13, 11. And I will punish the wor world. You got a portable? Yeah. Yeah, mine's ran out. All right, go ahead. And I will punish the world for their iniquity. The Lord said, I will punish the world for their evil. Go ahead. Uh, for their evil and, and the wicked for their iniquity. And the wicked for their iniquity. This world has been wicked. How do you have children looking at a guy getting pregnant by the devil? How do you have children looking at a guy twerking with other men in the prison system? And this is what you want our babies to look at? And the mass media is 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 cheering this thing on? Come on, man. Talking about Old Town Road is the most most played song in the history. That's a damn lie. I don't believe that. Come on, man. You beat out Michael. You beat out Prince. Hell, he's an Edomite, but even Elvis. You beat right. out Elvis. Right. Remember the, what, what they said about Elvis? They said, give me a white man that sounds black, and I could make you a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. That's what they said about Elvis, uh, the, one of the white producers. They said, give me a white man 
that sounds black and I'll make him a billionaire. I'll make a billion dollars. All right. So, yeah, I, I, even, you know, Elvis, he's Esau or whatever. But Little Nas X, he got the most played song out of all these legends in music. Right. Get the hell out of here. Mariah Carey. Right. You know, she had a lot of big number one hits. Worldwide hits sold multi-platinum, beat out other artists. All right. So, I, I just don't believe that. Hell no. Even even uh, the original rap, Run DMC, they got massive hits, sold millions, millions of them, had number one records in different categories. And here, this guy come on, uh, talking about a horse, or whatever the hell you're talking about, a song that's not even really all that great. And he sold them, he, he got, his song got played the most in the history of me, get the hell out of here, or whatever they tried to say. Couldn't be no Tupac. Right, couldn't be no Tupac, right. You know, but what is that? They, that's to push him more. That's to push him more so everybody can look like, oh, oh, this guy, you know what I'm saying? But anybody with a righteous mind going to look at that. This is pure evil, man. I'm not listening to this. I'm not following this. I'm not dealing with this. All right, you know. Eh? And that will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. See that? And, and uh, it tells you like Esau, man, and Obadiah, he's a proud man, and, and he's going to be humbled. He's going to cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Come on. And we'll lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. The Most High going to bring this place down to size. All right. He's going to cause this uh, uh, place to suffer. All right. For all the evil they've done against his people. Go ahead. And I will make a man more precious than fine gold. What did the Lord say? And I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Right. The Hebrew man that keeps these law, statutes, and commandments and raised up in the spirit. You're going to be made more precious than fine gold. Go ahead. Even a man that the golden, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Right, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir, some of the most fine gold on the earth. That's how the Israelite man is going to be. Not talking about other men because what? The Israelite man is the only one that's going to be raised up to that perfection in these last days. Okay? Right. Uh -huh. right, go ahead. Therefore, I will shake the heavens. And the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Right, so in the day of the Lord's fierce anger, the, the earth is going to remove out of his place when the nuclear destruction happened. It says the earth shall reel to and fro. All right, that's how much it's going to shake. The impact from the uh, nuclear, the third world's war is going to shake the entire earth. All right, thus saith the Lord. And the earth going to shake when the Israelites come back in power. Okay? Right. They're going to see the uh, might. They're going to see the strength and the might. All right? When we come back in power, when the Most High bestowed our power upon his servants. So we just got to keep enduring. That's all. Keep enduring. Right. Seeing the world for what it really is, not for what it presents itself to be, which they really can't even hide no more. They can't hide no more. It's, it's, it's coming out. We see this kingdom for what it really is, and the Most High going to continue to expose it. Okay? Right. All right? Read on. And it shall and it shall be as the chase roe. Come on. And as a sheep that no man taketh up, they shall every man turn to his own people. And that's what's gonna happen in these last days. We're gonna be forced to come together as a nation of people. You know, and I was watching uh <clears throat> that brother Khalid Muhammad, you know, even though he was coming from an Islamic perspective, Black Panther Party, you know, he had a little bit of different philosophies. He 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 believed in Israel, you know, he he would come out of camp and listen to us and, and be edified. And, you know, at one time, like right before he died, he was like, I want to I want to start being taught the laws. You know, he said, I want me and my my Black Panther brothers and sisters. I want you Israelite brothers to start teaching us the law. He said, we want to just start with the law, but we want to learn about the laws in, in the um, Torah. You know, and they killed them coincidentally about two weeks after that. Wow. But <laughs> yeah, God. But um, I was watching a brother and he was he was making a speech and he made a good point. He was saying, if you in any type of pro-black organization, at least have unity with your own people. Even though it's not the truth. We know we all supposed to come in the unity of the faith, like it tells us in Ephesians. But even a brother had the right mind and concept, at least let's work together as a people for the betterment of our nation. If you don't want gentrification in your neighborhood, fight together to stop gentrification. If you're tired of the police murdering and killing you, stick together and fight against that. All right? There's, there's no unity amongst us as a nation. 
All right, remember uh, Ice Cube said in that, that song, Summer Vacation, is a legal business niggas still can't stick together. All right? Even when doing something wicked, we can't say, okay, at least we're going to do it together. All right? The division amongst us as a nation, but we must unite. Of course, we know under the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. But our people don't even have that mind frame. Just It's just division amongst us as a nation. All right, read on. And flee everyone into his own land. Flee everyone into his own land. All right, hell, Levi, they might have said themselves, man, maybe we should have toughed it out in Haiti. You know? But we know it's bad in Haiti, but, you know, the way we being treated at this border, maybe we should have just stayed amongst our own people and, and just fought and survived. All right, but that's what's happening, man. Esau's on horseback, whooping them, stomping them, beating them like they did during slavery. Same thing, nothing new under the sun. All right, go to um, Ecclesiastes, matter of fact. Mm. Ecclesiastes 10 and 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 5. All right, we're going to get a few more, get a few more in the tabernacles, whatever else the Spirit bring out, and then wind it down. All right, please ask these the 10th chapter and the 5th verse. Read that, brother. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun. Right, so Solomon said he's seen an evil under the sun, meaning on the earth. Go ahead. As an error which proceedeth from the ruler. Go ahead. Folly is set in great dignity. And that's what's on the earth, man. Folly is set in great dignity. Right, go ahead. And the rich sit in low place. And who rich? The rich is Israel. Because right. we're spiritually rich. All right, the Most High tells us in James 2 and 5, he chose the poor of this world, rich in faith. All right, go ahead. I have seen servants upon horses. Esau is a natural servant. When you read 2 Ezra 7 and 10, the Most High said he made the world for Israel's sake. Everything on this planet is for us, even the other nations. They supposed to be servants to us. Right, go ahead. And princes walking as servants upon the earth. And princes walking as servants on the earth. Who's the princes walking as servants? Israel. Uh -huh. Why? Because what? When you check it out, you check out the scriptures and everything. What did the Most High say? When you read, when Jacob wrestled the angel, his name was turned to Israel. Which means prince of the power, prince of the Most High. So who are the princes walking on earth as, earth as servants? It's the Israelites. Okay? Uh -huh. We're the princes of the Most High. Now we're suffering. Now you you trying to sneak into a country to get a better life and you being treated like you was on a plantation back in the 1600s. Same thing. Okay? Uh -huh. And and uh uh Pat Robinson is true to a certain degree. So yeah, the, some Haitians defeated the French with all that voodoo. Yeah. When you read some of the history, Levi was using that 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 dark magic on a, on a, on a, um, French, and the most I just allowed it to happen because Esau's a devil anyway, you know. But but in the end, we're gonna defeat the nations with the righteous power. The most I we're not gonna have to use black magic, witchcraft, voodoo, all right, strange magic or whatever the case may be. We're gonna use the power of the most high and the spirit. But uh, you know that devil is right. He's still mad at at a. Uh, 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 the Haitians being defeated. Esau hate to take a loss, man. Yep. He hate to take a loss. That's why these race wars are going to be so bad. Because the so-called, when Esau get mad, when, and he see his kingdom finally falling, there's really nothing he can do about it, he going to remember everything from the past. Remember, Esau don't forget nothing. And he's very vindictive. He going to remember every loss he took, every time, he, every time a Negro defeated him, Everything he gonna remember when the when a brother put up his fist at the Olympics, he gonna remember all that, and he gonna go crazy. All right, he gonna lose his mind. That's where these Karens and 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 all these people come from, because they start thinking these niggers and they remember this and this and that, and it comes back in their mind and that hatred it just comes right out of them. All right, so when when the smoke clear, they gonna blame everything on Jake. They're going to blame everything on a so-called black man, Hispanic, Native American, and they're going to be frustrated because they kingdom falling. All right, go ahead. That was it on that. That was it on that. Okay, go, Khan. You want me to go to one? Oh, no, no, no. That, that's it on that. Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 15. So like I said, you know, um, yeah, try to move the generator back. All right. 
And I need a charge. All these charges are freezing up. I don't know what's going on. All right, it's not it's not that bad. It's okay. The noise from the generator is not that bad. It's all right. All right. Read um what I told you to get. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Read that. Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass that if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right, so why is this happening to us? For not keeping the commandments of the Most High. Jump down to uh, 43. Deuteronomy 28, 43. Yeah, read that. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. See that? The stranger that is within you will get up above you very high. Go ahead. <laughs> and thou shalt come down very low. And thou shalt what? I need something for this car. And thou shalt come down very low. And what? And thou shalt come down very low. And you're going to come down very low. So the Afghan come over here and get 2500 a month. Right. You got 1400 three times. And fighting to get the, another 1400 a fourth time. They talking about a 1400 a fourth time. Cali, you know, Cali gave out a little bit of extra stimulus. You know, Biden did the six-month thing if you got children or whatever. But that's it. They giving them 2500 a month. They giving them enough money to live. Okay? Uh, and they're living on a military base, which they probably not paying rent like that. Or not, you know what I'm saying? So they, they they good. Read it again, 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get oh, up no, above no, thee very high. And tell her, um, this is cold. I need a, I need the hot water. And thou shalt come down very low. The Lord said, the stranger that is within thee, they shall get up very high, and you're going to come down very low. They come to the country chilling. Right. Now look, you know what? If depending on how long Esau get them that money, they could take that money, put that money together. Next thing you know, the Afghans own businesses all over America. Oh, now they got good. the Seven Elevens, the hotels, the gas station like Elam and Ishmael. Now they all over the country owning businesses and and up above you, but you come down very low. Which they probably do that too. Well, yeah, they yeah. probably gonna do that. Remember, every time Esau let somebody come over here from another country, they get up above you. And they use the nations against Israel. They use the nations against us. Like like uh, the Chinese, all of a, a stop Asian hate. Right? They use that, and what, what happened? Biden signed all these bills to empower the Haitians. And that's what, that's basically giving them freedom over you. Right? That's basically giving them a leg up in his kingdom over you. All right, go ahead. He shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to him. Right, you, you, he's going to lend to you, but thou shalt not lend to him. You got to go to the enemy for the want of all things. You ain't got nothing to give them. You trying to get something from them. All right, come on. He shall be the head. Esau and the other nations going to be the head. Go ahead. And thou shalt be the tail. And you going to be the tail. All right, they get 2500 a month. You get 1400 three times, and you better be happy with that. He going to be the head, and you going to be the tail. The nations going to always work together. They're going to always work together against Israel. Give me that matter of fact in Revelation 11. Go to Revelation 11 and 11. All right, they're going to always work against you. Whether you like it, understand it, accept it, believe it or not. Read that, brother. Revelation 11 and 11. Revelation 11 and 11. After three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into, the, into, entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. The them is Israel. It said the spirit of the Most High entered into them. What is the spirit of the Most High? This truth. Okay? Uh -huh. This truth woke our people up from the time that brothers start speaking out on the street from the 70s. Some brothers say as early as the late 60s, even the early 60s and 50s. You have brothers on the street um, telling uh, uh, Telling the people that, that that they're the Israelites, you know, uh, I, I got an article, an article um, where a sister was talking about how she came to Harlem in uh, 1919, and uh, she she remembers seeing brothers on the street in Harlem, up standing up on ladders, telling us back then uh, we were the real Jews. This this is this sister said this was in 1919. She came to New York. And she seen brothers on ladders. Back then, they used to stand on ladders. So like they show you. 1919? 1919. Um, uh, I got that article back in my archives in New York. 
Um, I got an article. Yeah, a brother, a brother gave it to me. He made copies of it. He got it from a paper, and he made copies of it and gave it out to something brothers. And I got it in some of my archives. Uh, the sister said she came to New York. I forgot where she came from. She came to New York in 1919. And on the street corners in Harlem, there was men back then standing on ladders. They used to stand up on ladders. Remember like the movie Malcolm X? Malcolm X, yeah. Yeah, they, stand, they used to stand on ladders until the brothers in one west, they start making the pulpits and the podiums. Like I tell you in Ezra. All right, remember in Ezra said he stood up on a pulpit of wood? That's where the brothers got that from. But um, yeah, the sister said she saw uh, Israelites, she saw men in Harlem stand on ladders telling you African-Americans, you the real Jew, you black, you black Americans, whatever the term was back then, Negro, colored, whatever. You not, you not uh 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 African or you you the real Jews, yeah. You know, see, I met some brothers back in '98, I believe it was. I met some brothers, and um, you know, he tried to tell me. He said, "Man, your leaders are not really being honest." He said, "Your leaders are not." I said, "What you mean, brother?" He said, "Listen, our elders was on the streets." of Bedford Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, back in the 50s, mm. preaching that we was the Jews and Israelites. You know, but I would say with the so-called One West form of camps, we, our elders are the ones that produce the most street teachers. Once them brothers start coming out on the street, they, you know, camps start popping up everywhere. Even now with YouTube, camps just pop up everywhere. Your t-shirt and a YouTube channel. And now you a camp. Okay? Huh. Get out there, put the camera on, read a few <laughs> scriptures out the Bible, you a camp now. Okay? Uh. But I met these brothers, and they were some solid brothers. They seemed like they knew the scriptures, and they, you know, uh, they, were, they were pretty thorough brothers. Um, they had the, uh, they was wearing the meat trees, all right? And they were saying, um, you know, we taught a lot of y'all elders about tying the meat tree. I said, you know, brother, I'm not, I ain't, I ain't arguing, you know, if y'all was there, y'all was there. You know what I'm saying? But the truth, that remnant, you know, has always been there. You know what I'm saying? Read that again. Revelations 11 and 11. Go ahead. And after three days and a half, the spirit of the life of, from God entered into them. Right. So the elders taught us that you calculate that from around 1620, when the bulk of the slave ships was coming into the Americas to 1970, when the truth really came out on a higher level. But... Remember in Romans, the scriptures tell you there's a remnant according to the election of grace. So there was always a remnant of Israel throughout all generations that the Most High kept that knew they were Israelites until a certain time where the truth just bam, it just flourished all over the place. And now, you know, it's like they're every damn way. It's like a household name now. Kind? Okay? Right? So uh it said the spirit of life would enter into them. We would we would learn the truth and start coming back to our identity. Come on. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. The Lord said great fear fell upon those that saw them. Oh, uh-oh. They know that they the Jews now? Look what happened to Nick Cannon, right? Nick Cannon could get up there with all kinds of folly. What is it? Uh, uh, loud, loud and wild? Wild, wild and out. Wild and out. Get up there with all kinds of folly. They ain't got no... They, Viacom give him a hundred million dollars for that. The minute he say that we the real Jews, it's a problem. The minute he say that, and anybody, anybody else, the minute we say we the real Jews, it's a problem. It's a backlash. They gave him his show back too. Good, because he had to apologize and go sit down with yeah. Rabbi Fickenstein. You know what I'm saying? He had to go sit down with Rabbi Fickenstein to get his to get his hundred million dollars back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all but right. types of abominations on that show. Right, now it's all types of... But, oh, they're oh, they going to they break them down. They're going to buck break them. They already buck broke them when he apologized. Yes. All right, they already buck broke them. You know what I'm saying? The minute you say that, you can say anything else. You can say other stuff and get in trouble. You know, the, the, the baby got in trouble because he, you know, he said something about AIDS and, you know, dudes <sighs> performing, you know what I ain't going to say if the babies are out here. Dudes performing fellatio on each other. All right, you know, and uh, the sodomites got mad at that because they know that's what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? He said, if you ain't out in the parking lot doing that, you know what I'm saying? So they got mad at the baby. But when you start telling the people that we the Israelites, now we got a problem.
we got a serious problem here because great fear. Once we find out who we are and we keep them commandments, we're unstoppable. Okay? Uh -huh. Right, go ahead. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. It said, come up hither when them chariots come. All right, H-O-I to the chariots fly. All right, Israel, Israel to the chariots fly. Uh -huh. Right, go ahead. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. They ascended up to heaven in a cloud. That cloud is a chariot, so-called UFO. All right, go ahead. And their enemies beheld them. And their what? And their enemies beheld and them. And their enemies beheld. They looked. All right, they looked up and they beheld us. All right, they seen us going up on them chariots. Go ahead. And that same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. Right, the nuclear destruction is going to come, and certain parts of the earth is going to be destroyed. Go ahead. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. Go ahead. And the remnant were frightened. Right? Meaning many men. 7,000 represents completion. Many men going to be slain in the nuclear destruction. Go ahead. And gave glory to God of heaven. Go ahead. The second war was passed. And behold, the third war coming quickly. Right. The second war, which was the second world's war, passed. And World War Three is coming quickly. And what is World War Three going to consist of? Nuclear destruction. destruction. All right. Go ahead. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. The kingdoms of this world are going to become the kingdoms of our Lord. Come on. And of his Christ. And of Hamashiach Yahawashai. Go ahead. And he shall reign forever and ever. For how long? Forever and ever. Right. We're going to reign forever and ever. Go ahead. And the four and twenty elders were set before God of the, on their seats. Uh, what verse you in? 16. Jump up to 8. Revelation 11 and 8. I had you start at 11, right? Yeah. Go back up to 8. Right. Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Right, so their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. We are in like a dead state right now, spiritually as a people, and literally. And you're going to start seeing that more and more. When this martial law comes in, this, this new world order agenda, all right? See, certain things, people got thrown off by certain things, but... Certain agendas and prophecies and stuff is still in the cut. Esau still got, you know, you switch to the uh, pandemic <coughs> and the um, jab, you know, but don't forget the concentration camp still there. Right. The FEMA coffin still there. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> Which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. This society is spiritually Sodom for the homosexuality and the, and the sexual perversion in Egypt for the captivity. All right, go ahead. Where also our Lord was crucified. Where also Yahweh's image and his legacy was crucified here in this society. Go ahead. And that, I remember Salakia years ago, I brought this out many times. They had a, back in 1999, they had an off Broadway play uh, uh, called Corpus Christi. And it was about Yahweh being in love with his 12 disciples and having uh, sexual relations with them. Wow. Yeah, it was the Corpus Christi play back in 1999 in New York City. It was an off-Broadway play. I think it was like 50, like 52nd in Broadway, something like that. And we went up there to rebuke it. Right. We went up there to set up camp in front of the uh, theater where they was having a play. Right. But it was so many Christian groups out there, we was like drowned out. There's a whole bunch of Christian groups came from all over the country on buses. They had chartered buses and they all came up there and they just protested. And we was like, damn, let's just, we were already teaching in Times Square. So we said, you know what? We just going to go to our regular spot because it was, it was just, we was like, we get drowned out. You know, we didn't have, a, we didn't use speakers or nothing back then. So we was like, all these Christians out here protesting and yelling and this is an abomination. You're, you're, you're defaming Jesus Christ's image. And yeah, but they had a play with, with, with so-called, not Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, but their Jesus Christ, Caesar Borgias. Being in love with his 12 disciples and, and having relations with them. Oh, yeah. These are the last days. Yeah, these are the last days. That was back in 99. Imagine if they make a play right now. The hell that would be like. You know what I'm saying? Bring it out. It's also, it's, uh, it's stuff about the first transgender bishop. You seen that? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, uh, first transgender Wickedness, bishop. Man. Some lady that turned into a man and became a bishop. And then some other uh, uh, sodomite said that Jesus told Lazarus, he, he allowed Lazarus to come out the closet. Oh, my God. Talking about when Lazarus was in, yeah, he said, 
Lazarus, come out. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> just total madness, man. It's funny, but it's not funny. It's total madness, madness man. Madness, man. And you think the Lord is not going to visit these people? Right? That's why, hold on, like, give me Isaiah 29 and 6. That's why the earth being visited now. And it tell you in the pocket for the most high going is the time shall come when he will begin to visit the earth that he made. I think it's 2nd Ezra 13. There's a, a couple of times in the Apocrypha. But read that, brother. Isaiah 29 and 6. Thou shalt be visited. That's of the, why the earth is being visited. Come on. Of the Lord of hosts with thunder. With thunder, all kinds of storms, rain, Hurricane Ida. That's why New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Philly. The Northeast got flooded. Louisiana got flooded. Because the most I said what? Huh? Tennessee got yeah, flooded. Yeah, Tennessee. Jersey was finished. New, New York, they said it looked like the apocalypse. They said certain streets in New York, you know, a lot of places didn't get hit, of course, but they said certain streets in New York, it looked like the apocalypse. Trees uprooted, buildings jacked up. They said, man, it looked like a bomb hit New York in certain places. Queens got real jacked up. Most are not playing. I am legend. I am legend, kind. <laughs> it look like damn I am legend in certain parts of New York. The brothers and sisters like, oh, we fine where we live at. We good. We going to camp. You know what I'm saying? That's how the most I could do it. Remember when we was in Goshen in Egypt, he was sending the 10 plays on Egypt. Goshen was fine. He was right next to Egypt and we was fine. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like God. The Lord show. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder with and with thunder. earthquake. Go ahead. Earthquake. Come on. And great noise. Great noise. With storm and tempest. Storm and tempest. Hurricane Ida. Storm, tempest. Go ahead. And the flame of devouring fire. And ultimately, that nuclear destruction is coming. The flame of devouring fire is coming. All right. That nuclear fire. Right. Bombs, explosions. Like we brought out, man, there was explosions during, uh, during the hurricane. People's houses was flooded, and then they was blowing up out of nowhere. Just in the middle of the water, just get on fire and blow up. But the water was hitting the, the wires, causing an electrical fire, and then causing an explosion. So they, and they had they had several video. They had a few video footage of that. The homes just blowing up. He just, all right, they done from the flood, but they just blowing up in the middle of the water. That's the wrath for the Most High by way of Hurricane Ida. So the Lord is visiting this earth already for the evil. And like uh, John said in Revelations also, nevertheless, they repented not of their evils. All right, so go back to Revelation. What we was at? 11 and 8. Yeah, 11 and 8. Right, Con. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom right, and America Egypt. America spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Go ahead. Where also our Lord was crucified. Well, what? Where also our Lord was crucified. Well, also our power, Yahweh, was crucified. Okay? So, uh, you know, you know, they crucified. They didn't literally, of course, you know, but, they, but through his image, blasphemy. All right? Lying on his character. Telling Lazarus to come out the closet. <laughs> When, the, when Yahweh Shah said Lazarus, that's such, when Yahweh Shah said Lazarus come forth, he, he meaning he resurrected Lazarus from the tomb. Right. He was showing his spiritual power that he could bring people back from the dead. All right, he didn't say La Lazarus come forth, meaning Lazarus come out the closet. <laughs> it was wicked man. as hell, man. <laughs> oh, you mean they used those terms back in the Yeah, days. man, yeah. When he said Lazarus come forth, he said La resurrect Lazarus uh. from the dead. All right? That's what he was talking about. He was talking about resurrecting him from the dead, showing the spiritual power to raise people from the dead. Right. Lazarus come forth, me the Lazarus come out the closet. That's wicked as hell, man. Esau, uh, Esau, Esau. gonna pay, man. Esau gotta pay, man. That's evil as hell. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. See, that is said, um, shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves, meaning the nations would look at our condition, Esau and the nations, they would look at our condition and they wouldn't do anything to make our condition better. Okay? Uh -huh. they, would see our, they would see our dead bodies for a certain dispensation of time, three and a half days, and they wouldn't do anything to comfort. Like you see a dead body out, 
And I just leave it, just let it deteriorate to skull and bones. And you don't bury that body and, you know, give it some kind of dignity. Let me bury the body and get it out. You just leave the body out there like dung. And that's how they do us as a people. They're not giving us any comfort for the condition that we're in. Okay? Uh -huh. All right, good. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Yeah, and that's what, what by Esau giving the Afghans that 22, 25, 2300 a month, whatever, 2000, whatever a month, that's him. That's what? That's the nations giving gifts to one another. They're saying, listen. We got the Negroes in captivity. We got them in slavery. We got them destroyed. Look, let's 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 work together with each other against the Negro. Let's give gifts to one another. Let's look out for each other and keep the Negro oppressed. Let's let the, the China man, the Arab man, the East Indian doctor or lawyer, the Edomite, they can gentrify and move into their neighborhoods and then we're going to price them out. All right, now they can't afford to live in their own neighborhoods no more. Neighborhoods that we they historically lived in, now we're going to price them out. Everybody else can live there except for a Negro. He can't afford to live there no more. The China man doctor can live there. The, the, the Asian doctor, I mean, the East Indian doctor can live there. The African businessman can live there. The Edomite uh, can, can live there, but not the Negro. You got to get out. We taking your neighborhood back. We taking over your neighborhood. They send gifts to one another. They look out for each other. While oppressing Israel, that's what that's talking about. Okay, right. read right. it again. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send. They gifts. rejoice over our condition, they rejoice over the condition that they got us in. Go ahead, and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Send gifts one to another. They're gonna look out for each other while they rejoice and look at the condition we in as a people, uh -huh. right? Go ahead, brother. They're doing that now in Inglewood, you know, that stadium, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. stadium. Rent is like a yeah. million dollars over there, you yeah, know? They're doing that on the Crenshaw district yeah. too. Yeah, all that. Remember brother brother Tariq was able to raise that million dollars. Still, he raised over a million dollars. They still play games with him, yep. Yeah, and the man yeah. said is the man said he got uh that's why it is good. It is good. That brother showed an example of that with what he's going through in the Crenshaw district. Yeah. It is good to have heathens that you know that you have a rapport with. You know, Israel will be over, right? Are you cool with that Edomite? Uh, yeah, so you talking to that Edomite brother. I might be milking him for information that Israel could use. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Remember Moses sent the spies into the land? You gotta, uh, you know. So, well, don't be over-righteous all the time. I think you talking to that Arab. I, man, I might be milking Ishmael for information. Why is he, so, Tariq had a, he had an Edomite real estate agent. He was able to go in and find out everything that's going on in the Crenshaw district, in the Crenshaw area, you know, Lamert Park, whatever, all that. So the Edomite told him is a handful of white, as a matter of fact, it's really just one white family with different family members that's, that got all the real estate in, on Crenshaw, in the Crenshaw district on lock. Wow. So he said, he tried to go to two different, try to go get two different properties, and they owned by the same people. Wow. And both properties are giving him the runaround. Wow. They quoted him a price. He was like, yo, who I make the check out to? We got that. Uh, uh, uh. We got other offers and bids, so we're going to have to get back to you. Wow. He said the Edomite told him, this is crazy. I, this is how far they go to oppress us. Mm -hmm. The Edomite told him that there's black people that tried to get property in the Crenshaw district and the Edomite sold it to other nations cheaper just so they don't give it to Jake. That's what I was about to so if you if you tell me, let's say I'm an internet personality, I make I make 50 G a month on YouTube or whatever, you know what I'm saying? You got some of our people, man, they making a grip on social media. That's what Boozy brought out on a breakfast club. He said they got mad at us during the pandemic because we took over social media and we was making millions of dollars using their social media. And then I got up there and I started talking about their agenda. And they like, well, you ain't going to make money off us and, and discredit our agenda at the same time. So they took Boozy off there. He said, he said, they know with that 10 million followers, I was making money for that. He said, I had, even with, with white business people, I had deals with them. Now, my internet image is not there. Because, you know, e Esau, he loves advertising. Oh, you got 10 million followers? We can use you. You know what I'm saying? So, 
He said they went as far as to sell. You know, here's some of our people that got got some money. You know what I'm saying? And they they come and try to get a business or get a building or get property. Let's say Jake come over there and they say, "All right, well this this building is three hundred thousand." They say, "Okay, I got that." Well, no, 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 no. Okay, we can't just give it to you because other people have offers. Then they give it to another nation for two hundred thousand, mm -hmm. right. just so you don't get it. Yeah. yeah. And then they, well, we, you know, we had to. Other people had their bids in, and they were before you. And, but damn, you just lost a hundred thousand right. dollars. So Esau, they will. These nations, they will spend money to oppress us. Right. They will spend money. What do they say? The the average inmate. They they it is uh thirty five to forty thousand dollars to keep the average person in jail, average inmate in jail that you house in a year, and even even specialists have said, listen, if you take that same money and you put it into job training programs and you do things so that a lot of times these criminals don't have to go to the street, they don't have to sell drugs, they got other opportunities set up for them. Take that thirty five forty thousand a year that you use to house them in a prison and put that in, back into the community in different programs. You know what I'm saying? And, and put that money towards creating jobs and you will stop some of the crime. You'll give them other outlets. But no, they're not going to do that. They're going to spend money to oppress you. So you just lost a hundred. That, that show you is not about the money because Esau got the money. Yeah, like you said. They got the money on lock. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They ain't, about, ain't really about the money. They greedy as hell, but it ain't really about the money. They will... Like in Harlem, there were stories in Harlem in the Amsterdam news and different things, black publications, Final Call, whatever, where there were there were Jake, Judite, Benjamite, whatever, Israelite couples or people with money, doctors, lawyers, own their own business. All right, you know, they selling these condos in Harlem. Oh, I think I wanna live in Harlem. I wanna give me a condo in Harlem. <clears throat> the, con the condo is $1.2 million. Your, your mortgage is going to be $15,000 a month or whatever. Oh, I can afford that. You know, you want my bank statements, you want my, my you know, my pay stubs, whatever you need. That, you know, I got, I can afford that per month. Well, no, 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 sir. We're going to have to get back to you because, you know, next thing you know, they don't get the, they don't get the condo. Mm -hmm. They told, uh, there was a, um, a, a black couple, a young black couple, uh, a Cosby couple, they called them. One was a doctor, one was a lawyer. They made combined over $300,000 a year combined. They try to get this condo. Condo was like $2 million, whatever. But you finance it or you, you know, you pay, you pay a uh, mortgage. You pay, Cause you know, you can buy condos. They said, okay, they, we young, we want to start a, we want to eventually start a family, but we're going to start out in this condo. And we want to live in Harlem. We want to live in a historically black neighborhood. They red tape them so much. And the couple uh, eventually said, well, look, y'all basically just making excuses not to, rent, to, to uh, let us buy the condo. And they basically just straight up told the couple no. And uh, the owners of that condo never got in any trouble. And the city said, well, they're private owners and they have the right to rent to whoever they want to or not. But what about housing discrimination laws? So it's just showing you the racism on all level in this society, man. They will deny your money just because they hate you. You know, the Asians do it all the time. Hurry oh, yeah. up and buy. Oh, yeah. We don't want you in my store, all right? <laughs> or they'll beat the hell out of a sister because her nails didn't come out right. But they don't care about losing that one customer because a thousand of the E's going to come behind them. I don't care. I'm going to this all white party. So I, I need my nails done. I want white and silver on my nails. I, 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 you know, that happened to them. That ain't happened. They don't care. They know they'll beat the hell out of Eve, Jake, uh, uh, do your nails or hair or whatever, pedicure wrong. And I don't care. You got to go. That's how it came out. No, I want my money back or I want it done over. No, that's how it, and beat you out of the store. And don't care about losing two, three, four, five customers, 10 customers. Because what? A thousand other Negroes going to come back. That's why they so proud and purpose. Benjamin's gonna give them the money. <laughs> yeah, Benjamin gonna give them the money to, to restart their business. That was so disgusting. Yeah, Ten thousand dollars. That was so disgusting in Brooklyn. That oh, was so disgusting, goodness. man. Right, but that's what they do. They'll uh, Moab's business gets shut down for six months because of their racism and beating up old women. 
and Benjamin goes and gives them ten thousand dollars to get back on their feet. Wow. Our people yeah. are disgusting. Destroyed. <laughs> Destroyed for a lack of not even knowledge, common mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Destroyed for a lack of a brain. Brain damage. <laughs> brain damage. All right, so read on. Where we at? It was 29 and 6. Yeah. Read. Where did we go back to Revelation? No, we went back to Revelation. Right. Revelation right. 11, I think, is 11. Yeah. Read. Right. Uh, was that 10? All right, and it said, because these two prophets uh, tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Right, because they remember in their spirit. Yeah, like I said, Esau don't forget nothing. But in, their, in the nation's spirit, especially Esau, they remember the times we ruled over them. They remember the times when David oppressed them, whooped the hell out of them, the Maccabees. They go back to that. They don't forget none of that history. So they remember the times that we tormented them, tormented them, so now is the time to pay us back because they got us in captivity in these last days. They remember all that history. They remember when Levi chased the French up out of Haiti. They remember that. Oh, now you on our border. Come on down. Sa passe. Sa passe. Na Come on down, Levi. We got something for you. We remember that. We remember what you did to the uh, French. We ain't forget. So it said these two prophets. Read that again. So like it. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Right. These two prophets, meaning Judah and Israel, they remember the time that we ruled over them, tormented them, and we have power over them as a nation. They don't forget nothing, man. They know we the Israelites, man. That's why Nick Cannon got to apologize. And they say, you know, now you can get up there, you can have your $100 million show back. Now now you got to put all kinds of abominations up there. Man. Right? You know what I'm saying? All kinds of queerdos. Not even weirdos, queerdos. <laughs> you ain't know. Because what? That's one of the most dangerous things to Esau, us knowing who we are. The only, the only part that we don't have really now is the militant part. If Israel was going around as as militants and just tearing this place up, it would it would already be a race war. It would already be a civil war between Israel, Esau, and all the other nations. <laughs> but we we you know we stand in our place. We know this is a spiritual fight. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. God. All we got to do is keep doing this gospel. Keep doing this gospel. You know what I'm saying? This is pissing Esau off. This is pissing the demons and Esau off. Just. Coming together, doing the tabernacles. Uh -huh. Coming together, you know, at least catching a, our, our zeal, like we catching a little bit of part of the Sabbath, you know, and still like get something in for the Most High, give something to the Most High. Okay? Huh? Huh? You know what I'm saying? Just like our forefathers, you know, uh, they they had that zeal. They kept they kept Sabbaths in caves, okay. huh? In dens, in mountains, huh? We out here chilling. We we got tents. We can go to store. We can get water, juice, wine, food, whatever. We can't do nothing for the Shabbat. You know, we got a little late kickoff, but you know Israel. God. But we can't do nothing. Oh, man, that zeal. Oh, man, yo, we still got some light. Still got some of the Sabbath to get in the Word. Huh? Huh? And just keep it going through the Spirit. It's pitch dark already. But, you know, we in the midst of tabernacles also, but that's zeal. Okay. Huh? Huh? All right, everybody getting antsy. All right. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. When you're the spirit, you get the spirit, you get the spirit. God. All right, go ahead. I just seen this video with Joe Biden said, like, he didn't care. It was like a wild old video. He was saying something like, he doesn't care if uh, Haiti goes 300 feet below sea level or just disappears off the map. Like, wow. he doesn't really care about that. This is like an old video. Wow. You know? Yeah, that, that Biden is the oh, yeah, devil, man. Devil, yeah. That Biden, is, he's the damn devil that the Bible speaks of, man. Ah, old racist, yeah. Old racist, man. Old, old and, and, and they were saying how, you know, that see thou, dementia, Alzheimer's, whatever the hell is kicking in. they like, yo, he called some uh, black congressman a boy. <laughs> right, <laughs> and they said, <laughs> "Yeah, look that video up." Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, one. he called. Uh, he uh, some of y'all probably saw yeah, it. Saw, he yeah. called some uh, congressman a boy, <laughs> and they said that's because you ever see the videos on Instagram and stuff where the uh, home attendants they be tending to the Edomites and the Edomites be spitting on them yeah. and smacking them and uh, kicking them. Yeah. That's because when Esau get old, they can't hide it no more. That spirit just come out. You know that that. 
their their true memory. A lot of people, uh, you know, elder Judites used to say that. Crazy people know what they're doing. Yeah. A lot of people you think they bugged out, but they're actually coming back to know their true yeah, spirit. Right. So these Edomites, they be, you think it's dementia, Alzheimer's, whatever the case may be. And it could be that too, to a certain degree. But even in that, they start to remember their true nature. Ah. They start remembering who they are. And they like the hell with it. I'm old. I'm going to show these niggas I hate them. Ah. So, you know, I be, I be watching them little, they be sharing them little videos on Instagram and stuff, you know, with an Edomite woman. She'll be spitting at the black yeah, nurse attendant. Yeah, She'll be out. kicking them. <laughs> She'll be saying, nigga, right. nigga. Nigga. <laughs> nigga. You know what I'm <laughs> and, and a whole bunch of be like, don't say that. No. Cause they're trained, you really can't do that. Cause supposedly they're old. You know how many sisters said that old Edomites tried to touch them? And and, and they said, uh, come here, come here, sweet nigga juice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, come on, come here, give me some of that sweet, sweet nigga eyes. Yeah. yeah. A lot of sisters that work in um, them uh, old folks' homes mm -hmm. and stuff, and the, the home attendant, they, they, they said, oh, the old Edomite, man. And yeah, they show they true colors like nothing, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or oh, they the deathbed confessions, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, God. So, you know, these nations, man, they remember their hatred they have towards us. Go ahead. Yeah. Revelation 11 and uh, Revelation I think 11. 10. Yeah, that was go in on 10, go to 11. Yeah, go ahead. All right, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet. Right, so the spirit of life is going to enter back in uh, uh, into Israel. All right, give me um, Isaiah 52 and 1. The spirit of life, which is this truth. All right, remember Yahweh said in St. John 6, 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the spirit of life, y'all can uh, write that down as a precept link up. Revelation 11 and 11 with um, St. John 6, 63. That's the spirit of life that's going to enter back into Israel. The truth, the word, the true understanding of the word. Okay? Huh. Isaiah 52 and 1, read that. Isaiah 52 and 1. Wake, awake, put on the strength, O Zion. He said, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Go ahead. Put on thy garments, thy beautiful garments. Put on your beautiful garments, your spiritual garments, and your actual garments, your fringes, your border blue, whatever. Go ahead. O Jerusalem. And get in the habit of always having your fringes on. You come out the house, you walk around. That's an identifying mark. That's right. You know, that's an identifying mark. You know, have your fringes on when you're out there in the public, man. Be proud. Represent that you Israel. And it remind you not to be wicked as hell. Ah. All right, go ahead. The holy city. The oh. holy city. Go ahead. For henceforth there shall no more come into the uh, into the the uncircumcised and the unclean. Right, it's not the uncircumcised. No unclean is going to come back to, to us as a nation. In these last days, we're going to get tighter and tighter with this word. We're going to get, like Yahweh Shah said, be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And, you know, we're going to get tighter with these laws. And then once we get in the kingdom, of course, you know, no wickedness and uncleanness coming amongst us. Go ahead. Shake thyself from the dust. Shake ourselves from the dust, from the low estate. All right. Go ahead. Arise and sit down. And do what? Arise and sit down. Right. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise and sit down. That's that spirit of life coming into you also. Because without that spirit of life, you was in that lower state. You was in that dust. You was in darkness. You were spiritually dead. All right, but now you shaking that dust. You shaking that dust off you like, man, the spirit of life coming back into me. I'm awake. I'm, I'm alive. All right, I'm, I'm back into righteousness. Come on. Oh, Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Right, loose yourselves from the bands of your neck. The first thing we're supposed to do when we come into this truth is start to get rid of the mental captivity, the mental slavery, all right? Because uh, once once you start to unleash that, everything else starts to fall in place. Ah. Then you start feeling like, damn, I'm here, but man, you start feeling like Superman. There's so much power because I know who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm not in darkness no more. I know I'm still in captivity, but you know, most I open my eyes, I know righteousness now. Right, come on. For thus saith the Lord God, my people went down a fourth time. Salakia. 
that's it on that. All right, that's it on that. So um, I just want to shake the dust part because that that's also going into um, you know the spirit of life coming back into you. All right. When the Most I said Adam was formed from the dust of the ground, also meaning you know he gave Adam the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay. Ah. All right. So you know, just want to touch on a little bit of current current events, man. That 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 uh. That, that situation in, in uh, Mexico is crazy. At the border, is crazy, man. I, and, you know, you know, I saw this week that the brothers from the um, ISUPK have went down there and uh, offered some assistance and help to uh, their fellow Levites, you know, which was great. But on the flip side, not knocking the brothers' works. It's not about that, so nobody gets simple. All right? But on the flip side, a lot of times... Remember Hurricane Katrina? How many of y'all remember Katrina? And, and uh, damn. And remember now, uh, what's the brother from the New Black Panther Party? Uh, um, yeah, the tall brother. He's a lawyer. I forget his name. But uh, whatever the brother's name, I try to, it'll come to me. Um, that tall brother from the New Black Panther Party. But that brother, um, him, he said they bought trucks down there. They chartered buses down there full of supplies. And they got stopped at the city limit. They said they would not let them in. Target, Walmart, certain other top department stores said that they sent trucks down there full of of, of uh, 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 stuff that they needed, you know, goods and stuff that they was going to need. Said the military was stopping them at the city limits. Wow. So I say that to say sometimes... It's good to try to help, but even when you try to help, most I like, nope, I'm going to let these people catch hell. I'm going to block the help. I be, we can get help now, technically. But the most I said, no, I'm going to block the help. You think that that billions of dollars in surplus money, $1.9 trillion, well, they didn't give all that money out. That's why a lot of the politicians the, and the financial experts were saying that's, the, that's, that's what they call pork. They said a lot of that a lot of that money is going to go to pork. The reason why they call it pork, and notice they use pork. The swine is unclean. They call it pork because they consider that useless spending. In other words, they're saying a lot of that money just really going to go up in the air. It's going to go to other, you know, like you said, Metro and different people for so-called bailouts when they got billions of dollars already. They don't need no goddamn bailout. You know what I'm saying? But they, it, it just goes up and it, it goes to other private entities and businesses that really don't need the money. Mm -hmm. you just you just giving them extra money. Or it goes to other stuff and the money don't get used for what it's supposed to be used for. So they call it pork. They said a lot of that is pork spending. It's unclean. Well, I'm saying unclean spending. Meaning it's not. The money's just going to wherever. It ain't really going to help people that really need help or situations that really need help. You're giving a billion dollar corporation another billion dollars. Okay, that's basically all you're doing. So they they they, they got a term for that. They call it pork. You know, with with, with the uh, one point trillion, whatever how much it was that they uh, approved for the spending. All right, so go ahead. You want to? Uh, oh yeah, fifty two. No, no, no. That that was it on that. That was it on that. But uh, yeah, it's like yeah. You want it, this one? What's that? Uh, for thus said the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for not. Yeah, you can get that, yeah. All right. Uh, what verse is that? Uh, 52 and 3. Yeah, Isaiah 52 and 3. Read. For thus said the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for not. You sell yourselves for not. Go ahead. And ye shall be redeemed without money. And you're going to be redeemed without money. Most I ain't paying you a ransom for, to get you back. He ain't giving you, hey, $10,000. Now, you know, you come into this truth, you start doing the right thing. He will send blessings. And that's just for you to survive in, in this kingdom. That's all that is. There's no more, no less. But the most I said, look, I'm not going to pay you for you to come back to me. You know, this, this is not about me giving you something. You know, I'm going to give you the kingdom if you endure. I'm going to give you your life. I'm going to stop that, that drug dealer you might have a problem with. That other gangbanger from killing you. That beef you had for 10 years. And now I'm going to take the spirit off that guy from killing you. I'm going to bless you in those ways. But, but this is not about being redeemed carnally or, you know, the most I got to give you something for you to return back to this truth. We owe him. Ah. He don't owe us. Okay? Ah. All right, go ahead. Verse 4. For thus said the Lord God, my people went down aforetime. Oh, that's it all that. Right. Yeah, that's it all that. We have moved on from that. 
Yeah, so we just wanted to get into these current events. Like I was saying, oh, that was the point I was making. I was saying, even if you might try to help certain people out and help certain situations out, and you might say, I'm doing it to help my people. I'm doing it to help Israel because I love Israel. And the most I could still block it because he want them people to suffer. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. So a lot of times people say, what do you Israelites do for the people? What do you do? You don't do nothing for the community. A lot of times what? We can't do nothing for the community. The most I was like, I'm not letting y'all do nothing for these wicked niggas. Mm -hmm. I'm, going, I'm letting them suffer. As much as y'all preach to them, their head is still hard. We doing everything we can do for them by giving them the word. That's the best thing we doing for the community. Give me that in Matthew 4 and 4. So a lot of times, see, my point being, and like I said, this is not a shot at the brothers from the UPK or any Israelite group or organization, but a lot of times we do get caught out there trying to please the people's eyes. What do I mean by that? They might say, well, Israelites don't do this. Israelites don't do that. Israel so brothers will be like, brothers will get caught up in that. Yo, ah, man, we need to start feeding the homeless more. We need to start doing this and that. <laughs> You know, so you'll start doing you'll start doing stuff because of the pressure of the people. When you should, if you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it. Don't do it because Israel's saying something. But like I said, I'm not saying that's the case with the brothers. So nobody gets simple and try to start any unnecessary contention. I'm just saying in general, if you're gonna do your good deeds, do it righteously and do it sincerely. And a lot of times, don't let the people pressure you into saying, well, y'all Israelites don't do nothing for the community. Because a lot of times you'll go to do something and the most I will still shut it down because what? He want the people to suffer to a certain degree. That's part of the punishment and the curses. Right, go ahead. That was it? Give me... Oh, Matthew um, 4 and 4. Huh? Yeah, Matthew 4 and 4. That, that's what I call for. Yeah, right. Uh, so I just understand that it's okay to try. I don't care. If you want to go help every poor Israelite you can, but I'm saying even with that, I, I just used the example of Katrina. There were many people that said they tried to go into New Orleans and offer help. And what happened? The army had to get the credit. Because they said when that um when that Levite Army General Honore, I think his name was Honore, when Honore came to New Orleans, that's when things start moving around. So they said, okay, we'll let the black man get the credit for it, but it's gonna be the United States military that still get the credit for it when the military was shooting down people in the water. All right? So uh, that, that brother, I think he was a Levite, Honor, Honor Rain, General Honor Rain, he came down there uh, uh, about a week or two after Katrina, and he started getting things moving. The people start getting blankets and food and stuff they needed. They start moving things around. So, you know, they was like, this Negro, this Negro Army General was the savior. But, you know, the U.S. military still gets the credit. But a lot of people, there was testimonies from endless people that said, we tried to offer a, a, aid to New Orleans and it was blocked. No, the most I said, listen, them niggas in New Orleans is wicked. I want them to suffer. Okay? All right, right good. Matthew 4, verse That might four. sound harsh, but that's the reality of it. Why would the most I block the help? It's got to be because he said, no, I don't want the help to get to them. I want them to suffer. All right, good. Matthew 4 and 4, read. But he answered and said, it is written that man should not live by bread alone. Man should not live by bread alone. Come on. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of, the, of Yahweh. Man don't live by bread alone. You can feed the homeless. You can give clothes. You can give aid. All that. But if they not coming back to this word and repenting, it's null and void. Mm. All right. Because, um, listen, I'm going to give y'all, I'm going to give y'all. A little bit of history that the elders gave us in one west. Elder Masha, may he rest in power. And Elder Yaiqua, may he rest in power. They was uh, two of the original seven lead elders of one west. So I came to school all uh, 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 bright-eyed and I want to help my people. And, and, and Oh, we the Israelites. And, you know, I want to help all of, all of my people. So I said, Masha, can we um, set up a program where... We give our clothes and food and stuff to the people, our people that's less fortunate. So Elder Masha looked at me, he said, brother, I'm going to tell you something. He said, straight up, a lot of these Negroes are unappreciative. He said, me and Yaquab took out of our own pocket for two years straight 
He said for two years straight, we took money out of our own pocket and we fed the homeless every month. We gave out toiletries. They gave out little care packages, I guess. They put together like toothpaste stuff, you know, soap, toiletries, socks, whatever. He said, out of our own pocket, he said, we did that for two years. And we used to give out flyers. He said, everybody that got food in the package, we get a flyer. Come to the school, brother. Learn about your true nationality. You know what Elder Masha looked me in my eye and told me? He said, brother, do you know not one of those people in those two years ever came to the school? Now, later on, when I matured in the truth, I said the most I didn't want them. You know, they were they was a part of the 144,000 on the one third. But I said, damn, you know, it also goes to show you Israel is unappreciative, man. They want they want what you can give them. So my I say that all I, I say all that to say, don't feel bad if you're not this major humanitarian in Israel. I give food and clothes to the poor act. What do you do for the people? We teach them the word of Yahweh Bashan Rashiach Yamashai. That's the greatest thing we can do. And you can help many Israelites. Look, the scriptures say help those that are poor, that are mindful of the law. You know, a brother, sister walking in this truth, yo, I'm a little down on my luck, but uh, say no more. Yo, take a collection, go take care of that bill, brother. Go take care of that issue. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, a lot of times these people are wicked as hell. Huh. The, the elder told me, listen, for we did that for two years straight, young brother. He said, I know what you want to do, and that's good. He said, because you love your people and you want to set up something for them. But he said, we did that. He said, we did that for two years, and not one of those people came to the school. He said, everybody that came to the school was from the camps, the the uh, shows, you know, giving out, going to the camps, giving out flyers. He said... Because they used to have people stand up in the class and say, well, how did you hear about the school? How did you come in? He said, nobody never said, oh, I got some food and stuff from y'all brothers down the block. And, you know, I read the flyer was interesting. He said, not one of those people came to hear the word. Mm -hmm. But they was there every week, every month, whatever, lined up for that food. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, just, just give me one scripture. Sirach 12 and 1. All right, I'm not, not trying to, you know, in any way talk against anybody's charity but i kind of the spirit just kind of showed me that i would i would see different situations like well damn why would the most high not allow the people to get that help like new orleans new orleans was bad it was bad the ox said he was down there so i was even back then i was thinking well why wouldn't why wouldn't the most high and you know by that time i'm i'm what i'm by that time, I'm at least 11 years in the truth, so I got I got a good amount of understanding. But I'm like, damn, why did the most out? All these people was trying to bring these supplies. And number one, it's also to show Esau is the devil. Now, look, I'm, I'm blocking the help, but what? The only way the, the Esau can block the help is if the most high allowed him to. Everything go back to the most high. But the most high said, no, I'm not going to let that aid come through because I'm, I'm a punish y'all. I'm going to let y'all suffer. Remember, there was people from New Orleans saying, yeah, our city is wicked. We needed a cleansing. And hence, the, the name Katrina means cleansing. It comes from uh, the word Catherine, uh, which means cleansing. It actually means cleansing. All right. And I remember they, the Jet Magazine was still out back then. The physical Jet Magazine was still out. And I got a Jet Magazine. <clears throat> and I was reading an article out of the Jet Magazine in a camp where this blood, this brother that was a blood street gang member, and he said, he said, yes. He said, I'm a street dude and I'm in a gang. He said, I'm a blood. But he said, our city was wicked. He said it was full of drugs, murder, evil. He said, yes, our city needed a cleansing because our city was wicked as hell. I kid you not, a, a brother that was a blood that was in the convention center said that to the Jet Magazine. He said, yes, our city was evil. And he said, I'll admit, I'm a gang member. I'm a blood. But he said, our city was wicked and evil and it needed a cleansing. Hence Katrina. And uh, we brought this out, I think, in a camp or another class. Remember, Hurricane Ida was 16 years to the day of Hurricane Katrina. And both hurricanes did a lot of damage to where? Louisiana. Can't make this stuff up, man. The most I'm not playing. The most I know exactly what he's doing. Okay? Okay. It was 16 years to the day, August 29th, 
2005 is when Katrina touched down and then Ida touched down on August 29th, 2021, 16 years to the day. And both hurricanes smacked the hell out of Louisiana and other parts of the country. Okay? Uh -huh. All right, so uh, where we at? Yeah, Sarat please, Sarat 12 and 1. Read that. When thou wilt do good, know to whom thou doest. So going back to the whole thing that's going on with the Levi at the border. When you would do good, know to whom you do it to. Right, go ahead. So, so shalt thou be thanked for thy benefits. So you're going to be thanked for your benefits. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we don't know. Them, them, them people down there on the border, we don't know. Some of them could have been into voodoo, witchcraft, evil. You know, you know, Levi loved that Catholic church, mm -hmm. idolatry. Right. You know what I'm saying? Every year over in Haiti, they have voodoo fest. I, I heard, I heard in uh, 2010, when that big earthquake happened, like two weeks before that, they had they had just had a big voodoo fest in Haiti. So in the most, I jacked them up. Okay. Huh. All right. So when you would do good, know to whom, know to whom you're gonna do it to, and, and you know. Be sincere in your reasoning and helping the people. And don't be pressured by the gainsaying against Israel. What do you Israelites do for the people? You know, do it out of sincerity and truth. Okay? Uh, Jump down to six. For the most high hate of sinners. Good. And will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. Good. And keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. Come on. Give unto the good. It said give unto the good. Go ahead. And help not the sinner. And help not a sinner. So even when you're doing good deeds, man, you know, watch who you're doing it to. Okay? Ah. That's all. I had that set up for you. Huh? I was going to read it for you. Oh, which one? That was, I was already there. Okay. <laughs> no, read it again. Huh? Read it again. No, it's all good. That. Read it again. Uh, Sirach, Sirach chapter 12, verse 6 says, For the most high hate of sinners. The most high hate of sinners. But the church, the church tell you what? The church tell you uh, the Lord hate the sin, but not the sinner. Yeah. No, nope. what the scriptures say? <laughs> For the most high hate of sinners. The Lord say he hate of sinners. Go ahead. And will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. And he's going to repay vengeance unto the ungodly. A lot of times, stuff happen to people because they getting punished. They getting jacked up. <laughs> it's just clear. It's black and white. <laughs> Bring it out, Rob Judah. It's like that big uh, transgender saying, no, God loves me. Yeah. He's going to be accept me and kidding me. He's going to accept you. I'm right. thinking, oh, he's going to accept right. you. No, he's not going to accept you. <laughs> All right. Running around trying to be a damn woman. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. And keep them against the mighty day of their punishment. Right. And he keep them against the mighty day of their punishment. Don't you know, man, a lot of these wicked people, they being reserved to your Shah's return. Ah. You might look at them and be like, damn, they evil and that's why the scriptures say don't envy the wicked because it looked like they might be getting away with what they're doing. And, and a lot of times the envy, the wicked is prospering because Satan is rewarding them. All right, go ahead. Verse 7. Give unto the, the good. Give unto the good. Go ahead. And help not the sinner. And help not the sinner. That's, that's cut and dry, man. Cut and dry. That's cut and dry right there. A lot of times now, man, like when I'm in New York, I don't I don't give a lot of change and money to, to people um, panhandling because it is a, it's a bad heroin um, epidemic in New York now. Especially when I'm up and I'm, I'm um, near my house in the Bronx because they gentrify in my area, but it's taking them a while to clean certain areas up. Certain areas, it's still got that that Bronx hardcore drug. You know, thank the most high. I live on a decent street. And it's, and it's kind of like four or five blocks down from me. But it's still got that hardcore South Bronx drug element to it that go all the way back to the 60s and 70s. Right? Remember Fort Apache, the Bronx? That was that was dealing with the South Bronx. Right? Damn place was like a war zone for years. But it's gentrifying now. They're building houses, buildings, businesses, everything. But a lot of men, them people coming up and, sir, and they shaking it. And you got 50 cent, I can get something to eat now. Nah. Your veins is trying to damn eat. Right. You trying to shoot that damn heroin up, man. Right. Ah, but nah, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't like that. I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, especially there, Israelite, whatever. They they eat from Judah, whoever, Benjamin. Your brother down is like, here's a dollar, brother. Go get you something to eat. Or you know what? Let's go in this restaurant. I'll get it for you. But nah, I'll be looking, man, like, man, nigga, you want to go shoot up, man. So I'm not helping a sinner. I'm not going to help you destroy yourself. 
I'm not going to help you go put that needle in your arm. That's 50 cent closer to you getting that dime bag of dope. Nah, I ain't, uh-uh. You ask, you ask what, uh, 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 10, 20 more people, you're going to get that damn $10 for that dope. You know what I'm saying? So now nah, you got to, I'll be real careful now. You know, but even before, sometimes I'll be like, ah, I just take it. You know what, Lord, if they doing something wicked with it, you're going to judge them. Huh. But I, I gave it to them in sincerity. But now I'll be like, nigga, I ain't giving you my dollar, man. That's a dollar towards my baby pack of pampers. You know what I'm saying? That's a dollar towards me and my family food tonight. You gonna take and go shoot up in your arm. Okay? God. So give to the good and help not a sinner. It's just what it is. But when you're gonna be do good, period, let it be sincerity and truth. You know, them brothers had to go through hell and hot water just to help them help them uh people out in on the border. Them them hey, them Levites on the Mexican border. Which is good, like I said, you know, it's all good. Israel is showing that, you know, we do help the people too. But you got to understand sometimes the way the most I do things. That's all I'm saying. Okay? Ah. All right, so let's get a few on the tabernacles and we're going to close it out. Let's, uh, since it's the ending of the Shabbat, let's get a few on the law. Just a few. You know, we went over quite a few on the opening. But uh, go to Exodus. Exodus 23, 14. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 14. We'll just get about two or three and then do the closing prayer. And we can eat, drink, and fellowship and get warm. Um, ah. A little bit chilly tonight. Get warm. <laughs> That's the key right there. Get warm. I'm throw my hoodie on. I forgot this to take my coat. Is, is making it, but it's all right. 23, 13. Yeah, uh, 23, 14. 14. Exodus 23, 14. Read that. God. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto them. That's 23, 14. Exodus 23. Oh, that. Exodus 23, 14. All right, uh, everybody, uh, round up. We're going to do closing prayer soon. I know the women trying to get the food going and everything. But um, three times. Got to get our thanks and praise to the Most High. Read that. Exodus 23, uh, 14. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Right, so the Lord said, Three times shall I keep a feast unto me in the year. Now, we know there's more than three feasts, of course. But these were the three main feasts where all males were required to come before the Most High. And these were these were the, um, these were what was known as the pilgrimage feasts, which, if you could, you had to try to make it up to Jerusalem to keep the feast. If not, there's stories of us keeping feasts, Israel keeping feasts in other areas. The scriptures tell us, uh, many of the uh, feasts in Leviticus and the Lord tell us to keep the feasts throughout all our generations and all our dwellings. So I don't give a damn if we're, because we in California, we're not going to keep the tabernacles. No, even if we was able, wasn't able to camp, we was at least going to do the opening and the closing at a gathering spot. At least that. But thank the most side, you know, we got a chance to camp for some of the days and maybe next year we'll push for seven days. Okay? Right. You know? Read on. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days. Right, the feast of unleavened bread is the Passover. Go ahead. As I commanded thee in the time appointed of the month of bid. Right, in the time that the Lord appointed in the month of bid. Go ahead. For in it thou camest out from Egypt. And remember, we brought this out in the opening. Most of y'all, if y'all took good notes, um, you know. The three main feasts was based upon the harvest season. So that's why they were the three main feasts also because that determined your blessing of your crops for that year. The Passover began the barley season. Uh, seven days after the Passover was the planting of your first fruit, your crops or your first fruits. And then the Feast of Tabernacles was your end gathering or the end of your crop year when you gathered all your crops in for the fall and winter season when you wouldn't be growing your crops. All right, go ahead. And none shall appear before me empty. Everybody's supposed to bring something before the Most High, a donation, an offering, food, drink. If you just dead broke, can't bring nothing, bring yourself. Yo, what can I do? Can I help put something up? Can I help arrange something? What, you know, I give of myself, but don't come empty handed with any kind of help for the feast day. Go ahead. And the feast of harvest, the feast 
the first fruits of thy labor. Right, that's normally in the late spring, you know, almost summer, the, the first fruits, seven weeks after the Passover. Go ahead. Which thou hast sown in the field. Go ahead. And the feast of ingathering. The feast of ingathering is what we're in now. The feast of tabernacles is also known as ingathering. Okay, go ahead. Which is the end of the year. Which is the end of the crop year. All right, it's the end of the crop year where your crops, uh, you know, you gathered in your crops for the rest of the year. Go ahead. Where thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Right, when you gathered in your labors out of the field. Right, go ahead. Three times in a year all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. Oh, that's it on that. That's going yes. into uh, the reiterating the Passover. Okay. All right, so that's pretty cut and dry. The most I said, these are the three main feasts where all males must appear. Now, if your family's not unclean or nothing going on with them, your family's supposed to be there too. Your wife, your children, but it was a requirement of the male. And with it being a requirement of the male being a head of the household, of course your family falls in order. Ah. Okay? Ah. All right, uh, Exodus 34, 22, 21. We're just going to go back over to some of the ones we went to in the law on the opening, just as a refresher and a reminder. And perhaps for some of those that is hearing it for the first time, they can be edified. Exodus, All right, Exodus 34, 21. Exodus 34, 21. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In the, in earing time and in the harvest thou shalt rest. Right. Uh, the um, the seventh, the six, the seventh day, which is the Shabbat, of course, we rested. All right, we rested from all your labors. All right, and we have to, you know, throughout our regular weekly Sabbaths, we have to, you know, um, understand that. You know, being that it's a feast day, we're camping. We're traveling from our homes. We pray that the Most High have mercy for some of us that had to get certain things today that we would need. Kind? Uh, you know, we pray that he would have mercy. But normally during the Sabbath, you abstain from buying and selling. Kind? Get everything you need between Thursday night, before Friday sundown, or even throughout the week. But like I said, being that we in a feast day, eight days of tabernacling and feasting, we pray the Most High have mercy. Okay. Right. right, go ahead. And, thou shalt and that's not, mercy is not an excuse to abuse the law either. Okay? Right. So always find that balance. You know, find that balance. If you can, you know, abstain from certain things on the Shabbat, even during a feast day, still try to rehearse that because it'll train you for all Shabbats. Right. Okay? Right. All right, go ahead. And thou shalt observe the Feast of Weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest. And the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Right, the end gathering at the year's end. There it is again. Go ahead. Thrice in the year shall all your men, children, appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. See that? So the Lord had to be repetitious in the law so Israel can get it, man. Right. Okay? Right. Got to keep reiterating to Israel so they can get it. Right, go ahead. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. Neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of Passover be left until the morning. Khan, so the Most High was letting us know again the, the three feast days that was required. Even though we still keep the new moons, we still keep the atonement, we still keep all the other feasts, but these were the three main feasts. Okay? Uh, and earring, when it says earring time and harvest, earring time would be Passover first fruit season, and harvest would be in gathering or tabernacle season. Okay? So even though it's, it's using different wording, but it's still referring to the feast days. Okay? All right, go from there to uh, Proverbs 3 and 9. Proverbs 3 and 9. Because the end gathering, uh, the end gathering is when you gather in your crops. And you, you store up your crops in your barn, which your barn or your storage facility, that was like your tabernacles for your food. So when you celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, that's another layer to what you're celebrating and giving thanks to the Most High for. Ah. The tabernacle to cover you and, and, and preserve your food. Okay? Ah. Right? It, 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 it's a feast of dwellings. Whether you want to call it booth, tent, tabernacle, uh, a temple, dwelling, barn, storage, home. It's all dealing with different forms of a dwelling, a tabernacle. Okay? 
And when we keep this feast, we must keep in mind all of those layers to this feast. You thank the Most High for all of that spiritual tabernacling when you keep this feast. Okay? All right, go ahead. Proverbs 3 and 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance. The Lord said, honor him with your substance. Go ahead. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. Right, you were supposed to sow your seed and give thanks to the Most High your first fruits. Go ahead. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty. Your barns will be filled with plenty. Go ahead. And thy presses shall burst out with new wine. The Most High will bless your crops. You will have your corn, your, your wine, your, which is your grapes. And, you know, your, your barns will burst out. Your in-gathering, your tabernacles will be a great in-gathering of your crops. Come, because you honored him during the first fruits, during the beginning of the season you honored him, and, do it, and during the end of the season you honored him. Okay? Go to Leviticus 23 now, 33. Two more, we're going to close it out. Leviticus 23, and we're going to get one in Numbers. And uh, I just want to get some of the ones in the law since we're closing out the Shabbat. Oh. All right? And we'll get some more. Uh, like on the opening, you know, Brother Kazak and uh, Jamin, Simeon, they brought out some of the more spiritual aspects of the tabernacle with Yahweh Shai. And things of that nature. So it's different, you know, understandings and layers to this feast day. All right, read that, brother. Leviticus 23, verse 33. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Right, meaning work for hire. Go ahead. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. Go ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. What verse is that? 37. Come on, bring it out. To offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and a drink offering, everything upon his day. Besides the Sabbaths of the Lord, and besides your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which ye give unto the Lord. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye get, have gathered in the first the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Hi, go ahead. And ye shall take on... And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and of willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in a year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye right, shall... so you know when you when you keep in a feast, like also you know what we can do when you have your tents or whatever, you can gather different branches and put them on your tents as a, as a memorial. Okay? Huh. You do that. I see the Kazakh family, they had some on there. My wife put up some of the, the leaf decorations and stuff, you know. And you did too. Just to get in the spirit. Yeah, kind. All right? Just to get in the spirit. All right, go ahead. Because when you, Salakia, when you check it out, it tell you in the history, the booths or the tents or the tabernacles, sometimes they were made out of light material, like canvas or like a light aluminum or even wood. And then they would cover them over with the branches and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know, so uh, that was that was our homes when we was dwelling in the wilderness. Our temporary homes. Okay? Wandering yeah. through that wilderness for 40 years. So like good. I said, who 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 can who can who can do that now? You know what I'm saying? Israel say, nah, I need my bed. I need my Netflix, my fire stick. <laughs> <laughs> I need my shower. Boy. Even these campgrounds, man, these campgrounds is damn set up damn near like luxury. We got Wi-Fi, and this ain't really no wilderness living. You can go down and play in the playground with the children and get in the pool and charge your phone and take a nice hot shower. That damn shower is feeling good today. I ain't want to get out. Like, and the shower feeling good. Nice hot water, you know what I'm saying? There ain't no real wilderness living, boy. You got to know how to tough it out. Good? Nah. Well, we spoiled, man. We we tabernacle and spoil. We spoiled tabernacle. Okay? Nah. All right. Remember, man, listen. Some of us bought two and three pairs of footwear out here. 
Remember in the wilderness, it said, man, our shoes was on us for 40 years. Yeah. And the most I didn't let them wax off. Nah. <laughs> most I kept your shoes for 40 years. Yeah. Nah. Tell you that in the stories, man. Okay? So we tabernacle, we got all kinds of lights at night. All kinds of decorative lights and fancy lights, you know what I'm saying? Different food. Different food. Most of we world about to jam and some music. You know what I'm saying? Got good food. Sisters throwing down on the on the grills and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Got electric grills out here. Yeah. <laughs> Hot plates. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hot tea and coffee and chocolate. You doing good. I don't think they ready for the real wilderness. Well, I don't think we ready for the real wilderness. Uh, nah. <laughs> and some of Israel can't even deal with this. Right. This is why every year, man, people are like, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, yeah. <laughs> they ain't even ready for this, and this is spoiled. Right. This is spoiled, man. All right? Go ahead. 42. No, finish at 41. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. For verse 42. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Right, and the, the dwelling of the booths was only for Israelites. All right? When you read a Deuteronomy, everybody in your gate had to acknowledge the feast day, even if there was a stranger or a heathen among you that was like your servant, but uh, only Israel dwelt in the actual booth or tents. Go ahead. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. When I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. See that? So is 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 one of the main layers to it is the remembrance of when we came out of Egypt and when we dwelt in booths or tents. Right throughout our wanderings in the wilderness. Okay? Ah. So a remembrance, and it puts us back in a mind frame. How, how do we look at that now? We look at that now as, real quick, give me uh, Jeremiah 14, 16. What do we look at that now? We look at that as we dwell in a booth, right? And the Most High delivered us out of Egypt. Now, we look at us, we dwell in the booths or the tents, looking forward to the Most High delivering us out of America. Kind, yet another layer to the tabernacles. Kind, wow. see how it just goes on and on. The things to be thankful for, the things to look forward to. It just goes on and on. It's just so many layers to it. All right, go ahead. Fourteen, sixteen. Yeah, kind. Uh, and the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem. Is that fourteen, sixteen, Jeremiah? Jeremiah fourteen, sixteen. Try uh twelve, fourteen. 12, 14. Let me see what I want. This is the Lord against all my evil neighbors. Yeah, yeah, try that. Read that. Jeremiah 12, 14. Thus saith the Lord against all my evil neighbors that touches the inheritance which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. Right, he's going to pluck the heathens out of our land and he's going to pluck out the house of Judah from amongst them. Look what's happening to them Israelites in Demona. Hmm. What is it, like 65 of them got to leave? Right? The Most High said, look, but I'm going to pluck the heathen out of the land, and I'm going to pluck up Judah from amongst them. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass. After that, I have plucked them out. I will return and have compassion on them, and will bring them again, every man to his heritage and every man to his land. Right. Mainly Israel. We're going to go back to the land of Israel and inhabit it. And even the heathens, after... You know, the thousand years of captivity and they serve, they're going to go amongst their dwellings. Good. And it shall Still come, being ruled by Israel. Good. And it shall come to pass if they will diligently learn the ways of my people to swear by my name, the Lord living, as they taught my people to swear by Baal. Then shall they be built in the midst of my people. Um, so like your tribe, Jeremiah 16, 14. Let me see if that's the one I want. I, we did 14, 16, right? Nah. Try 16, 14. Let me see if that's what I want. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall be, that it shall no more be said. Yeah, perfect. That's what it is. The so, Lord. like, like, like we just read in Leviticus 23, that you dwell in booths, that the children of Israel may remember that I brought you out of the land of Egypt. So now, dwell in the booths now, we're going to look forward to the Most High bringing us out of America. Kind? Kind. Why? We're going to look forward to the Most High bringing us out of spiritual Egypt, which is America. All right, so that's another layer to the tabernacles. Read Jeremiah 16, 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall 
no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Right, it's no more going to be said, the Lord lived, that brought us up from Egypt. Go ahead. But the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. That the Lord liveth, that brought up Israel from the land of the north, North America. Go ahead. And from all the lands, whether he had driven them. And from all the lands, whether we have driven them. Like, there's a debate amongst the Negro-only Israelites and the, what, the ones of us that still co-sign to the chart. And they say, well, most of them people on that sign is from North America. Mm -hmm. But we always say, we also say, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. We always say that. We say the bulk of the Israelites came here to the Western Hemisphere to fulfill prophecy. It tells you that in uh, uh, Micah, that that will go forth even to Babylon. There will I deliver you. All right, so you gotta understand with all your with all your getting, get understanding. Oh, you one West Twelve Trot Trot Camp. No, no, most of the people are just in the Western Hemisphere and scattered throughout all the earth. Anybody that don't know Israel is scattered throughout the earth. Okay, you want us to write that in big bold letters on the side also now? That'll make you happy. All right, but read to that. Yeah, go ahead. They want us to make a chart for Africa, too. Right. <laughs> like we don't live in Africa, really. Right. They want us to, uh, <laughs> the tribe of Ephraim is in, is in uh, uh, Bukini Faso or whatever the hell, man. I don't know. Right, go ahead. And then, like I said, there could be remnants of tribes everywhere. That's why you right. say scattered throughout the earth. And if you have a shot, come back and say 10,000 of them people in Africa that you thought was Hamites is Ephraim. Okay, fine. Okay. What am I, what am I going to do? But I'm not just going to take every Hamite or every person that's somewhere claiming to be a Jew. And you listen, when you do in-depth research, you know how many nations convert, converted to our customs? We're speaking Hebrew and everything. Yeah, you got to understand that these are actual Gentiles that converted to Hebrew customs. That don't make them scattered Israelites. You know what I'm saying? Cat look like damn Montezuma. Not Montezuma, uh, what's the other one? Genghis Khan. That's a scattered Israelite, huh? Because he spoke Hebrew. No. They converted to our customs, a lot of these nations. Go ahead. Behold, I was sent for many fishers. Uh, Jeremiah 16, 14 again. Okay. Like Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whether he had driven them. And I will bring them again to, into, their fa into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Right. So, you know, the, the tabernacle go goes into that, that angle also spiritually. You can look at it as, you know, looking forward to the Most High bringing us out of spiritual Egypt, which is America. Okay? Uh -huh. So all, all the feast days have a historical... They have a present and they have a future context to them. Okay? Huh. Like we said, the Feast of Trumpets, you know, back in the ancient time, we blew the trumpets for war, for announcements, for the new moon, to announce the new moon coming in, whatever. Then now we blow the trumpets. We spiritually blow the trumpet now by going out there teaching. And we physically, you know, a lot of brothers are coming back to blowing the action shofar. All right. Uh... And then is the blowing of the trumpet at the second coming of Yahweh Shah. So all the feast days have a historical, uh, 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 modern day, and futuristic aspect to them. Okay? Call me Yashallah. So there's layers to the feast. All right? Um, that was it on Leviticus 23? Uh, yeah, that was on the Okay, yeah. So um, y'all can link that up. With the Most I said in Leviticus 23, I think is the last two verses. That we remember when we came out of Egypt, uh, Jeremiah 16 and 14 and 15, where um, it's going to be said that we was brought out of the modern day Egypt or the land of the North America. Okay? Uh -huh. So, you know, through the spirit of the most size, it's, it's chambers to these feasts that you got to understand. You know, we're not just here sleeping in a tent for a couple of days. <laughs> All of this is nothing without this. Uh -huh. This You got to always remember, this is why we're here. Okay? That's right. Uh, give me my last one. Give me Numbers 29. Yeah, I said I was going to stay in the law. So Numbers 29, start at verse 25, I believe it is. No, start at verse 23, I believe it is. 
Numbers 29 and 23, I believe it is. That'll be our last one. Gather everybody around. We're going to do closing prayer, anointing, and then eat, drink, and be merry. I know y'all want to get to that. Okay. Uh, oh, y'all read those scriptures for two hours. Oh, God. And, um, you know what I'm tell saying? Tell everybody we're going to do the prayer. The Appreciate one. the word. God? God. Right, read that. Numbers 29, verse 23. Good. And one goat for a sin offering. Uh, start at 22. Start at 12. No, not 12. Start at 22. Uh, and one yeah. goat for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering. And his meat 23. offering. 23. And, and on the fourth day. Oh. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay. Um, no, not 23. Uh, 26. Numbers 29. Start at 26. Fifth day. Yeah, on the fifth day. Yes, read 12 first, matter of fact, and then jump to 26. So like in Numbers 29 and 12, and then we're going to jump to 26. 29 that, and 12. And on the 15th day of the seventh month, mm -hmm. you shall have a holy convocation. Well, on the 15th day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. That's what we had this Monday, September 20th at even. Like I said, you may see different dates now. I saw today where some brothers is, is keeping their day of atonement. It's all good, you know. We're not here to be proud about dates and contend with each other. Somebody got some information. They show you, hey, this is a, how you calculate the feast days. You check it out. You agree with it. You don't. Know. All right, God? You keep the day the Most High showed you through the spirit that you research. You know, don't try to be a scholar that you're not. Well, you know, I know how to read the exact circumference of the moon I, I know when is the exact date all right do your research do even in-depth research but keep it humble Israel that's what I'm saying Telescopes, right God. <laughs> God. <laughs> and I mean hey if you want to go in go in but go in and still stay humble yo brother I did some real in-depth research on calculate the feast days here's what I came up with all right I, I'll check it out I don't want to get into a debate I don't want to argue with you I don't even want to say who's wrong or right. I'll check out the information, brother. Maybe I'll learn something. Whether I agree or disagree, maybe I'll learn something. Okay? Uh, right, go ahead. Ye shall do no serve our work, and ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. No serve our work, meaning work for hire, and you shall keep a feast to the Lord seven days. Always try to keep the, keep the main feast, get the main feast days off. Go ahead. Uh, verse 26. And on the fifth day, nine bullocks... Two rams, and 14, lamb, 14 lambs on the first year without a spot. So every day of the tabernacles, it was a certain amount of offerings that we were supposed to give to the Most High. From day one all the way counting down to day eight. Go ahead. And their meat offering and their drink offering for the bullocks and for the rams and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering and his meat offering and his drink offering. Go ahead. And on the sixth day. On the sixth day. So last night, sundown was the fifth day. So tonight, sundown is the sixth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Hallelujah. 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 So we closing out the fifth day. The Shabbat closed out. And we coming into the sixth day. Okay. Uh -huh. That's why the scriptures... Like with the Day of Atonement, it says the ninth day at even. It means the closing of the ninth day. On the ninth day as the sun is going down, which brings in the tenth day. Some people get confused about that. So that's why we say it's the closing of the fifth day. The Shabbat and the fifth day of Tabernacles closed out as we coming into the sixth day because the sun has officially gone down. Okay? So we, we're basically celebrating and commemorating and having a service for the Shabbat, closing of Shabbat. Closing the fifth day of tabernacles, coming into the beginning, and celebrating the sixth day of tabernacles now. Okay? Right, go ahead. Uh, 14 lambs on the first year without blemish. And their meat offering and their drink offering for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the seventh day... That's it on that. So we're just dealing with the fifth and the sixth day. So throughout the years, whenever you celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, always read Numbers 29, 12 down to the end as a commemoration of the different offerings we burnt to the Most High each day. And so that you stay in the spirit each day and you give your offering. 
You give yourself, you give your prayers, you burn your Frank and Myrrh, you do your meditation, you read a few scriptures or whatever. That's your fifth, sixth, seventh day offering to the Most High. Because, you know, we're not in our land, we're not set up a certain way where we burning all them sacrifices, you know, 10 goats and five sheep and nine cows, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't set up for that right now. No okay? farms, you ain't even got no farm. We couldn't even burn all that out here. The damn officers would be like, hey, what's going on, guys? What are you doing out there? You having some kind of ritual? Right. Animal ritual, they try to get us for animal cruelty. Right. You know what I'm saying? But they, you know, they look, okay, they just grilling their little meat on their grills. They good. Okay? Uh. But in rehearsal and, you know, the most I have mercy on us, you know, we, we are... We are now the the, sac the sacrifices and the offerings, and you just read them and you know, meditate on it. You know, read each each verse for each day. You know, I try to post the verse for each day to keep keep Israel in the spirit. You know, here's the fifth day, numbers such and such. You know, just just a little extra zeal. Okay. Ah. All right. So that's it on that. Um, so today is the starts the sixth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Tonight is not a Sabbath. It's not a Sabbath start tonight or tomorrow night, which will be the seventh night. But Monday sundown will be a Shabbat. Okay? When we start the closing service for Monday sundown, that'll begin a Shabbat until Tuesday sundown when the tabernacles is over. And, you know, it's just uh, your regular weekly days. Okay? For those that are keeping it at these same dates and times. Okay? Wow. Uh, so that's about it. Any questions or comments? All right. Um, I'm just glad we got something in <laughs> before the sun went down. Maybe that'll lift some of that wrath off for us <laughs> and bring in some mercy. But um, we'll get there. We'll we'll perfect it, Israel. Okay. Uh -huh. But remember, like I said, practice on your regular Shabbos. You know, regular Shabbos. I I don't even go out the house until I'm going to camp. You know, I'm I'm in, man. You know, I don't even I ain't leaving out the house unless it's an emergency or something that just got off. Or he shall say, pay your bill, or we cut you off in an hour. Oh, man, most high, please have mercy on these devils. I got I to gotta pay this bill on the Shabbat. You're going to get your terminated in an hour if you don't pay. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't nothing like that, then, you know, meditate, rest, whatever. Maybe even do a little Shabbat lesson, a little study and read in, and head out to teach the Lord's word. Get that discipline, you know, uh, on your regular Shabbat. Right. But may the most high have mercy, being that it was a feast day. Car, you know, there's a lot of stuff when you're damn camping, man. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Eat a little bit of everything, and like I said, we spoiled. You know, we got ice and cold drinks, hot drinks. You know, all kinds of blankets and sleeping bags and pillows and all kinds of comfort. You know, ain't got to use a rock as a pillow. <laughs> all right, but uh, all praise to the Most High, Kai. Ah. So, uh, Asha Shabaf. Asha Shabaf. Asha Kag. Sakawaf. Sakawaf. Day five and day six. All praises to Yahweh by Shimon Mashiach I hate when somebody is calling me on Facebook and I'm on Facebook Live. Don't you see that I'm live? So like, yeah, and they, and they just, trying to get? and they're binge calling, huh? Is he trying to get? I doubt it, but um, I'll check. But he gotta wait till I finish. All right. So um, got any questions or comments? So uh, happy Sabbath again, closing of Shabbat, and um, happy day five and six of uh the Feast of Tabernacles. Like I said, I'm just happy we was able to squeeze a lesson in there with about an hour of daylight. You know, um, all praise to Yahweh, Yahweh shine for that. May his mercy endure forever, Psalms 136. Okay? Ah. So the rest of the time, tomorrow sundown, we'll meet here at the tent. Our tabernacle's tent is officially set up. <laughs> you know, we'll meet here and um, we'll do prayer, anointing, and just a couple of uh, tabernacle scriptures. And then Monday, Monday we'll do the official closing ceremony. Uh, uh, so that's the schedule for uh, the red. Tomorrow's a free day. Do what you want. It's not a Sabbath. You can enjoy yourself. Um, everybody stay safe. Um, you know, uh, 
do as you wish. There's different things on the grounds, whatever, but stay safe. Everybody remember, it takes a village. Look after all the children as if they're your own. Okay? Huh. Um, be safe. But, uh, you know, y'all can enjoy tomorrow. But just tomorrow, make sure you're back here towards sundown with your little garment, your fringes on, whatever, so we can do prayer to bring in the seventh day, anointing. And, but it won't be a long service like this. We'll probably just get a couple of scriptures on the tabernacles, you know, 20, 15, 20 minutes, and bring in the seventh day. Okay? Ah. Then Monday sundown, we'll, we'll have an official class and, let, and you know, closing service. Okay? Uh. Then Tuesday, go home and close it out. Do a closing prayer when the sun go down at your home for the closing of the tabernacle. You can just do a closing prayer at home when the sun go down. Tuesday, sundown, it's over. See you next year for tabernacles. If it be the most I will, or see you on a damn chariot, better yet. Okay? Uh. Uh. All right, so um, that's it for me running my mouth. Anything else? Any, anything else? But uh, yeah, you know, so that's that's the schedule for the rest of the time here, um, as far as, you know. So you can come in here throughout the day, pray, meditate, do whatever you want. This is our Rehearsal the Righteous Acts tent for this year. So, you know, come in here, pray throughout the day, whatever. Usually it's enclosed, but you know, can't be over-righteous. It's, it's going to have to work for now. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It's perfect, right? Yeah. Huh. I like it a little closed, but hey, it is what it is. Last time we only had one side open. We had an actual tent with only one side open, and we was able to even close that. But this will do. It's perfect, like the sister said. Come. Come. Most I have mercy on us. He know our, our heart and our intentions. So that's it. Like I said, enjoy yourselves tomorrow. Everybody be safe. If you're going down, they got the playground, whatever. You go down with the children, be safe. Watch out for everybody's child like they're your own. Watch out for each other like they're your own. All right? I ain't here to babysit y'all, goddammit. Elder, what we doing now? Like, go, you can have your fun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, just, you know, we communicate with each other, but I ain't, you know, I ain't got to tell you what you can do. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here for that. Just be back at Sunday. <laughs> Don't be looking at me in my face. It's 2 o'clock. Is, is it okay to go for a walk? -in? <laughs> is it Elder, it's okay? To, you know, I ain't no tyrant. You know what I'm saying? I just want you to be safe, whatever you're going to do. It's okay to let each other know where you're going to, okay? So we all be on point with knowing, yo, if you're going here and there, hey, we about to take a walk, but you know, I ain't going to babysit y'all. Just be back at, I'll babysit the babies, but just be back at uh, here by sundown. Change, dress ready if you go wherever and you need to change. Just be back here as it's getting dark, a little bit before, so we can do prayer to bring in the seventh day, okay? Ah. And that's it, you know, enjoy yourselves while we're here on the campgrounds, ah. right? Come here, Shala. Come here, Shala. All right, All right so we're going to do closing prayer, anointing, bless the food and the drink, and it's party time now. <laughs> uh, we could jam tonight, too. It's, it's not a Sabbath, but uh, we're going to still keep the music spiritual. Yeah, no, nah, don't play that. <laughs> no little Nas X. Hell no. That man gets no run at no type of Israelite function. No spins over I don't give a damn if it's a cookout on a Sunday. That man gets no run. Nothing at all. All right. How many call you out with it? No, that was uh, that was another brother. Yeah. No, that wasn't our Yahweh. No, that was another brother on Facebook. He's a, he lives up north. I don't think he's trying to get here. Up north, like where? Uh, I don't know, somewhere up north. I forget the name of the city. I, I know he said it's north, but uh, I don't know. All right. Well, hold up. We'll tell y'all when it's there. Ready? Cause I, we gonna get it. We gonna get it. We gonna get it. Stand and face Jerusalem on the east, which is this way. Closing four corners prayer, anointing prayer, 
blessing of the food and the drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, power, Yahweh is one. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, Creed of Israel. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed of Israel throughout the four corners of the earth. Blessed of all side, Yahweh, by Shem Rashiach, Yahweh Please bless Israel, all the camps, schools, congregations that are sincere in Yahweh Shai throughout the four corners of the earth. Bless all of our brothers and sisters in righteousness and in truth. By Shem Rashiach, Yahweh Shai, to one of our Hallelujah. 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 Uh, sisters, come up. Brothers, be seated. Sisters, come up and get anointed. I was about to say, who the hell is going to your tent? I was about to stop the prayer. Because I'm looking and I'm like, I'm thinking Little Ma's over here. So I'm like, who the hell? And then she looks so big. Her shadow looks so big. Who the hell going to your tent, huh? Wrong tent to go into. Most often, bit yeah. like uh, <laughs> or any night. God damn it. That's what it is, bro. And if y'all don't get them, I'm right next door. And, and Taz is right in the tree. So they, they finish either way. <laughs> they finish either way. Come on, all of our beautiful princesses. Get your anointing. For the closing of the Shabbat. Ready, you got oil? Oh, who didn't get oil? Oh, a little more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a baby. I'm a baby. I'm a little Afro puff. They have nappy like daddies. But that's that good hair. Mm -hmm. right. You got? I ain't about to edit that. Oh, you didn't get? I can't forget Angel. That's an Angel. All right, that's everybody. Come over here. One more. One more. Who else we got? That's it. That's all the sisters. All right, come on, get y'all anointing. All right, so we're doing anointing prayer number six, twenty-two to twenty-seven. The general prayer that the Moshe gave to Aaron and the priests to say over the children of Israel. Uh, we do this on most Shabbat feast days and you know major occasions, so everybody can get their blessing. Um, Y'all know the routine. As we pray, finish the prayer. Only me and Kazak say the prayer. Finish the prayer. We go from right to left. You say your name three times. We repeat it. And you get your anointing to the most high. Okay? All right. All right. Repeat after me, Brother Kazak. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. 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 My Kalo, Malahayum, La, Shemahayo, Barak, Rapal, Isaiah, Magun, Kazak, Hatazayal, Kwawa, Karima, 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 Kalen, 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 Ahabia, 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 Kataya, 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 Salakia, Salakia, Put up, put up. 
Zara, 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 Elizabeth, 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 Angel, 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 Zanai, 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 Zamora, 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 Zakara, 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 Raylan, Raylan, Raylan. Cole, Akium, Cole, Aguafium, Cole, Bunyum, Yasha'ala, Bahashim, Hamashia, Yahawasha, the water, the yard, I will long. Akium, come up, get your blessing. <laughs> To eat, drink, and be merry. Uh -huh. Get your Saturday night tabernacle in on. All right, get your oil, make one line. All the brothers. Where's she going? Same thing. You got oil, Rashad? Yeah. You got? Yeah, yeah he already got oil. Okay. Yeah. That's everybody? That's everybody? Same thing routine, but we're going to do the anointing and prayer, number 6, 22 to 27. It's a general blessing over the children of Israel. Um, you know, as we praying, oh, I forgot to give my normal speech to the sisters, but they know it. Uh, for sisters and brothers, when we're doing this prayer over you, you ask the most high for strength, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Uh, anything you might be going through, some people are going through things, you know, different from suffer more than others or things that's troubling you, health-wise, job, whatever, Esau being a demon, whatever. <coughs> now is the time to ask the most how to give you extra help in those areas that you may be suffering a little bit more in. All right, um, ask to be, a, of course, a better man for the most high, better husband, brother, son, overall man of the Lord in general. Uh, uh -huh. Ask for strength as being the men that's gonna be on the front line mm -hmm. in these last days with all help, but, and the target is mainly going to be the Israelite man, so I should stood for that also. Okay? Uh -huh. uh, same thing, we say the prayer. When we finish, we go right to left from Rob Judah. Come all the way around, repeat everybody's name three times, and you receive your anointing blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Repeat after me, Kazak. Yabaraki Yahweh. Yabaraki Yahweh. Waya Shemar Kaz. Yahweh. Yahweh. Ban Yahweh. Al Yakar. Waya Kun Kaz. Yasha Yahweh. Ban Yahweh. Al Yakar. Waya Shemna Kaz. Shalom. Yahweh. Ba'ashem. Hamashiach. Yahweh Shai. Bobo Kushar. Shemai. Nawa. Aita. Shalak. Ma'ikala. Walahayim. La. Shemaiel, Barak, Rapar, Aizah, Magun, Kazak, Atazayal, Bawa, Rab Judah, Rab Judah, Rab Judah, Frederick, 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 Xavier, 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 Zakari, 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 Yashua, Yashua, Yashua. Rashad, 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 Tazadak, 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 Kazak, 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 Zabak, 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 Ko, Akim, Ko, Abafim, Ko, Bunyum, Yasha'ala, Ba'ashim, Hamashiach, Yahawashah, the water, the yard, Avalon, Avalon. Oh, boy.
my lord. Yeah. Uh, Tazadak, can you read Numbers 6, 22, 27, the English translation, the water king? Six twenty-two to twenty-seven. <coughs> Numbers chapter six, verse twenty-two. Verse twenty-two to twenty-seven. And Yahweh spake unto Masha, saying, speaking to Aaron and to his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Yahshua. Saying unto them, Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put the, my name, sorry, my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sisters, imagine what Pranya Yerushalayim stand and face Jerusalem to bless the food and the drink. All right, we almost home. We almost home. Be not weary and well doing. All right, face the youth, bless the food and the drink. Who's that over there? Hello. Now I want to eat and drink and pray for this food. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Brothers turn to the sisters, give them a salute. Sisters turn to the brothers. Akim Yasha'ala. Brothers of Israel, salute our sisters of Israel. Amaja. Barak. Yahweh. Yahweh. Bashem. Bashem. Hamashiach. Hamashiach. Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah. Shema Thun. Shema Thun. Sisters, Yahweh. Bashem. Hamashiach. Yahweh Shah. Shema Thun. Most out of the name of Christ, watch over you. Hallelujah. Sisters, so be seated. Akim, her, to each other. Salute each other. Amajim, Barak. Yahweh Bashim al Shabbat the Thumb. Yahweh Bashim al Shabbat the Thumb. Hobby Shah. Hobby Shah. Hobby Shah. Hobby Shah. Who got next? We got next. Who got next? We got next. Who got next? We got next. For how long? For how long? For how long? For how long? What we going to do? Take the kingdom. What we going to do? Take the kingdom. What we going to do? Take the kingdom. When? Now. When? Now. When? Now. How? Bashim al Shabbat the Thumb. How? Bashim al Shabbat the Thumb. Damn it. How? Bashim al Shabbat the Thumb. Hobby Shah. Hobby Shah. Happy Feast of 
Tabernacles day five, going into day six. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eat, drink, and be merry. Ah. <laughs> oh, okay. He was a group Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Everybody? Oh, yeah. Okay. Come on, bro. Got a good light. Come here, Anybody else? Come on. Group pick, group photo. Everybody, everybody, everybody. everybody. Don't be scared, don't be scared. Group pick, group pick. Everybody, everybody, don't be scared. We family. Get in where you fit in. Come on, everybody, everybody. Open your coat. Open your coat. Open your coat. I know, right? Oh, no. Don't be shy. Come on down. Y'all can get on the edge, yeah. Come, come, come. Y'all can get on the edge, baby. You can take your hood off. Take your hood off. Come on. Can you see? Turn, turn. Come on. All right. Count it off. Come here, Shalom. I got both of them going on. Make sure you get your photo. Got it? Got it? Got it? Got everybody? Hallelujah. You still need this baby truck to start? No, I don't even know what we're doing. Blood draining is what it's all praise to you, Howard by Shem Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, Kormi Ashala, Israel. Uh, happy Feast of Tabernacle, day five. Going into day six, happy ending of the Shabbat. Hope y'all enjoy yourself tabernacling in the spirit of Yahweh Yahweh Shai forever and ever. Kormi Ashala. Shai Khan Sakawa. Happy Feast of Tabernacle, please. Nice. Chill out, man. Going into day six. Three, four, five, six. I'm going to have five right here.